Okay, good evening. I would like to call the Prince William County School Board meeting to order. Um, tonight um, is a public meeting. We are um, due to the COVID-19 state of emergency. This special meeting of the school board is being held electronically under the authority granted on April 22nd, 2020 by the General Assembly through the Amendment 28 to House Bill 29. Citizens have been provided with multiple opportunities to provide public input, including participation and input at public naming committee meetings held on June 22nd. The right to speak this evening is through electronic means during the public comment portion of the hearing. Posting of comments on a dedicated PWCS webpage and submission of comments to school board members by mail and email. Citizens who have signed up to speak electronically this evening must confine their comments to the renaming of the Stonewall Middle School or Stonewall Jackson High School. Um, so that's the just uh, normal announcement we make to let everyone know that we are doing this meeting electronically. We're next gonna go to the Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, Ms. Argapur, our, our, our flag bearer, um, could you lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. All right, good. We got to work on that um, aim there. Um, okay, next, we're going to have the approval for the agenda. Um, a motion is in order to approve the public meeting agenda. Ms. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move that we approve the public meeting agenda as recommended. Um, do I have a second? I have a second. Ms. Wall seconds. Um, we will take a roll call. Uh, any discussion? Excellent. We'll take a roll call vote. Uh, we'll go um, in alphabetical order. Ms. Um, Adele Jackson? Yes. Ms. Jackson votes yes. Ms. Jesse? Yes. Ms. Jesse votes yes. Latif, I vote yes. Ralston? Yes. Ms. Ralston votes yes. Mr. Wilk? Yes. Mr. Wilk votes yes. Ms. Wall? Yes. Ms. Wall votes yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Williams votes yes. Ms. Zargapur? Yes. Ms. Zargapur votes yes. That passes unanimously. We will now move prior to the, so, um, Tonight's meeting, obviously, um, for those of you that are probably tuned in, know that we are renaming Stonewall Jackson High School and Stone Stonewall Middle School. Uh, we've had two community meetings that have led up to this point, a number of focus groups. Uh, the committee has worked diligently to get us to this point. We're going to have some more citizen comment time tonight about this. Before we enter citizen comment time, I've asked David Beavers, um, who is helping us uh, assist with this effort to um, tell us again, and, and Dave is the Supervisor of Planning and Financial Services, Office of Facility Service. He will go through very quickly here um, what we've gone through in our committee meetings, um, the process for naming, and then we'll go straight into citizen comment time. The citizen comments are, uh, are um, um, restricted to tonight's agenda items, which obviously again are the renamings. Mr. Beavers, please take it. Thank you very much, Dr. Latif, uh, members of the school board and Dr. Waltz. Thank you uh, for the, the opportunity to be here this evening. Uh, my name is Dave Beavers. I'm with the Office of Facility Services, and it's been my pleasure to facilitate the naming process for the two naming committees. Uh, as you know, we have two different naming committees, one each for Stonewall Middle School and Stonewall Jackson High School. Members of the naming committees, first for the Stonewall Jackson High School Naming Committee, the, the members are Chairman at, Leaf, Chairman at Large, Bob Latif, Ms. Adele Jackson from the Brentsville District, Ms. Jennifer Wall from the Gainesville District, and Ms. Lisa Zargapur from the Coles District. The second naming committee is for Stonewall Middle School, and it's composed of Chairman at Large, Bob Latif, uh, Jennifer Wall from the Gainesville District and Adele Jackson from the Brentsville District. 
Now, tonight we will have citizen comment time and the citizens will be able to provide their comments regarding the namings, the renamings. Uh, they'll have two minutes each to speak. And we do have a Spanish translator available if uh, he is needed. Our Spanish translator is Mr. Amadeo Baltazar. And Mr. Baltazar, if you would like to introduce yourself and announce your availability in Spanish, please. Uh, buenas noches con todos. Mi nombre es Amadeo Baltazar. Eh, si tienen alguna pregunta eh, que quieran hacer en español o alguna otra pregunta para ellos, eh, hágamelo saber. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Baltazar. You're welcome. Uh, we appreciate you being here. Um, Jason, next slide, please. All right, first, a little background. Uh, School Board Policy 854 calls for the creation of a naming committee, or in this case, a renaming committee, but also notes that the final approval of the school facility name rests with the entire school board. Next slide, please. Regulation 854-1 tells us that the naming committee will be comprised of the chairman of the school board, the school board member in whose district the unnamed facility is located, and any school board member whose district is overlapped by the attendance area for the unnamed facility. In this case, Stonewall Jackson High School is located within the Brentsville district. Stonewall Jackson's attendance area overlaps the Brentsville, Gainesville, and Coles magisterial districts. Therefore, Ms. Jackson, Ms. Wall, and Ms. Zargapur join Dr. Latif, chairman at large, to make up this naming committee. In the case of Stonewall Middle School, the school itself is located in the Gainesville district. The attendance area overlaps the Gainesville and Brentsville magisterial districts. <laughs> Thus, Ms. Wall, Ms. Jackson, and Dr. Latif make up the naming committee. Next slide, please. It's important to note that the committee is charged to consider these naming criteria, but are not limited to these criteria. These include geographic elements, historical elements, names of living or deceased persons who've made significant service contributions. Please note that the selection preference will be given to those individuals who've made significant contributions to the field of education, especially within Prince William County. Next slide, please. Uh, just to review the process that we have on, undergone to get to this point, uh, we've held two community input sessions. Both of those have been virtual. Uh, the first was on June 22nd, and the second was then on June 25th. Now we're here tonight on June 29th uh, for information and action with the school board. Uh, and as we mentioned earlier, there will be the opportunity for citizen comments for those who have signed up in advance after, the, uh, after this presentation. Uh, it's also important to note that the final selection of the facility name is the responsibility of the school board. Next slide, please. Uh, these are two just uh, reference slides to show you the uh, two facilities that we're renaming, Stonewall Jackson High School and Stonewall Middle School. Next slide, please. Now, in terms of suggestions, we've had a very robust response from the community, and we certainly appreciate that. Uh, we've had over 775 uh, suggestions that we've received, uh, and uh, thank you to everyone who's taken the time to send in your comments and suggestions. Uh, I would like to review now in alphabetical order the top 10 names that have been submitted. Uh, please keep in mind these are just in alphabetical order. So the, the first suggestion uh, is Arthur Reed, then Bull Run, Celestine and Carol Braxton, Dr. Ibram X. Kendi, James Robinson, Janice Wellington, L. Douglas Wilder, Lucinda Griffin, Manassas, and finally, Unity. So that's, uh, that's the list of uh, suggestions, the top 10 suggestions we received. Uh, overall, again, 
uh, over 775 su submissions, and uh, we certainly appreciate all the feedback that we've received. Next slide, please. Okay, that concludes my remarks. Thank you very much. Mr. Beavers, thank you once again for all the hard work you guys have done. And um, we really are very grateful for all of that. And um, we will now go ahead and Jason, I'll turn it over to you to start citizens comment time. Again, just as a reminder to our citizens, you'll have two minutes to speak. Um, uh, it would be best to let us know what your choice is and, and, and why, and we're excited to hear about those. Um, so Mr. Stevens, take it away, please. All right, our first guest joining us this evening will be Leonard Patterson. I'm working on unmuting you right now, Leonard. All right, Leonard Patterson, your mic is now live. Yes, good evening. Um, good evening, everyone. I hope you can hear me. You can. Okay, if you can hear me. All right, good evening. My name is Leonard Patterson, and I reside at 101 Statesboro Court in Manassas, Virginia. The zip code is 20109. I'm a husband, a father, Sunday school teacher, and an automobile damage appraiser by trade. I live across the street from Stonewall Jackson Senior High School to the members of the school board and our audience. I'd like to take this opportunity in requesting that the name of Stonewall Middle and Stonewall Jackson Senior High School be renamed to Celestine and Carl Braxton Middle and High School. I'm overjoyed that even as the state of Mississippi and other regions throughout the country take the corrective actions in retiring these Confederate monuments, statues and tributes and properly removing them to museums. It is my joy that Prince William County is not left behind in these appropriate actions. As an African-American man, seeing the largely white letters of Stonewall Jackson at institutional higher learnings, I found them to be very insulting, particularly being that the schools, uh, the demographics are largely diverse and the majority of people of color. I'm so joyed that we have taken the corrective action in removing the names of this individual who fought to preserve enslavement of children and are now replacing it to educators. Um, the Braxtons are valiant historic trades people of this region who were educators and trailblazers for civil rights and education and empowerment of all children. I thank you again for your time and your attention to this matter. Our next guest is Kendra Barr. Your mic is now live. Good evening. Can you guys hear me? We can. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, perfect. Good evening, members of the school board and Superintendent Waltz. My name, my name is Kendra Barr, and my address is on file with the clerk. I'm a 2015 graduate from Stonewall Jackson High School, and I would like to speak in support of renaming the high school, either reunited or after Celestine and Carol Braxton, and the middle school, Sotomayor Middle School. After graduating and going off to college and then to law school, one of the biggest embarrassments is handing over my resume and explaining to someone that as a black person, I graduated from a high school that bears the name of a racist and a traitor who fought to enslave my ancestors and lost, might I add. I cannot change the name on my diploma, but it is time that the school's name reflects the strength and the hope of the students who attend them. People are concerned that removing the name Stonewall erases history, but last time I checked, Black history and Hispanic history are American history. We should pay homage to heroes and leaders, the first of their kind. And most importantly, though, I hope that the progression forward does not stop with a simple name change. The history and culture so present in both schools exist outside the confines out of the month of February and October. The needs and struggles of these schools does not stop with a simple band-aid that is a name change. And I hope the school board recognizes that and plans to make action to truly provide a world-class education to every student, regardless of socioeconomic status or school location. Thank you, and I yield my time. Great. Our next guest is Alyssa Macaranis. Your mic is now live. Alyssa Macaranis.
just gonna unmute yourself, Alyssa. Give it a few more seconds. Cue the next one. Alyssa Macaronis, last last call, Alyssa. All right. We will move on to Jerry Duku. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Okay. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank you for allowing me to uh, the opportunity to speak on this topic that's begun to get the attention that it deserves. I'm a black female graduate of a Prince William County school and an active member of our community. I'm certain that it took the most brutal and humane acts of violence against black and brown civilians for a county to consider the removal of Stonewall Jackson's name from our middle and high school. I believe changing the name of these schools is the first step among many on the road to creating a more equitable future for all students in Prince William County schools. I'm sure you already know this, but I feel the importance of this step, of this fact cannot be understated enough. Both Stonewall Jackson Middle and High School are composed of a predominantly Hispanic student body. Over 60% of the population is Hispanic. Further, roughly 15% of the student body uh, in both schools is composed of African Americans. What message does it send to our students of color when we have the name of a Confederate soldier used as the school's title? That's why I support the suggestion to rename at least one of our schools after Dr. Um, Ibram Kendi, who is a former Stonewall Jackson graduate and current historian and advocate for minority rights. Just recently, he spoke um, at a congressional hearing describing the disproportionate impact of COVID-19 on communities of, colors, of color. Another school um, could be rec uh, renamed after Joyce Russell Terrell, who had to go through many hardships as the first black girl to integrate Garfield High School. So as you consider the renaming of these schools, I just ask that you take into consideration the demographic composition of the student body. What impact would it have for a student of color and all students to walk into a school named after an individual who was on the right side of history and championed equity above all? Who demonstrated the importance of education regardless of race, socioeconomic status, or um, location? These are the influential messages we send to our students and future leaders of our nation. Your choice will determine if these students will find this school to be a safe haven, a glimmer of hope for their future, or is viewed as another institution that has failed them and already predetermined their, role, their worth. Your role as a student board member is to serve in the best interest of all students, which includes your black and brown students, and your vote will truly better the lives of generations to come if you are on the right side of history. All right, our next guest is Monique Braxton. Monique Braxton, your mic is muted on your side. Last call for Monique Braxton. All right, we're going to move on to Richard Jesse. Hi, my name is Richard Jesse. I live in Occupy District. I just want to say to the board, I, I know that unless there is some significant emotional event that occurs tonight, you have probably already made up your mind. I just ask you to consider the first looking at your policy uh, I do not believe you should just name something out for a geographic location. I think there are people that are deserving of, of the schools being named after them. So when you look at the two, two criteria, historical consideration and uh, name of a living or deceased person who has uh, given significant contribution to the field of education, in my opinion, the Braxton's I fit those two qualifications, the strongest of, of the people. So I do urge you to consider them uh, for the naming of the school. And hopefully, uh, again, please do not use a geographic uh, consideration. Thank you. Great, thank you. Our next guest is Sean Key. Your mic is now live. Hello, am I, am I 
able to be heard fairly well? We can hear you. All right, thank you. Two minutes goes very quickly here, so here it is. Thank you, esteemed members, for allowing me to speak here. Um, it's clear there's many honorable nominees. There's so many more that weren't nominated. For my generation um, of school attendants uh, through the 90s, we could discuss Mr. Moon Mullins, a beloved maintenance man, um, someone that the kids just adored and looked up to. Uh, Mrs. Smiley, Mr. Gates, wheelchair-bound math, math and SCA homegrown teacher at Stonewall Middle. Um, my point is this. There are so many great teachers that have put in 20, 30 years, so many staff members that have contributed. And as I suggested in the letter, I think there's a place for all these people, whether it's a wall of honor, plaques, um, and murals, certainly ways to honor them. But when it comes down to a specific name for me, and, and I'm biased because I'm definitely part of Lucinda Griffin Foundation, but I've thought and I've really soul searched here. And to me, she's the only person that I can picture in my head at the age of 14, the same age potentially as one of these kids at the middle school, which by the way is what we're really focusing on now, that took fire. She was wounded. She carried that scar and wound the rest of her life. She risked her life at 14 year old, trying to save a slave owner, someone who had oppressed her essentially and put her um, in a position that clearly now we all agree we're, we're trying to change, we're trying to move along. Um, I just don't think in comparison, her sacrifice is um, any lesser than anyone. And I think it's certainly greater. I mentioned also in this letter, um, the, big, the big picture. You know, you could talk in art class and have the students realize there's no photographs of Lucinda. They could go through exercises, painting and drawing, and the students could portray everything they have in the halls for African-American History Month. That's engaging. History, talking about who the first slave injured in the battle was. That's Lucinda. So much to be learned there. The big picture means not just the name on the school, but taking the life and the lessons of Lucinda and being able to have the children understand, grow, and perhaps be molded by the sacrifice of an amazing young human being who would be a peer to those children on the name of that school. Please consider Lucinda Griffin Middle School. Thank you for your time. Excellent. Our next guest is Anthony McGee. Can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first, I want to uh, thank the committee for giving me the opportunity to speak. My name is Anthony McGee. I found my name and address and phone number with the clerk. C.C. Braxton Middle School or C.C. Braxton High School? Both have very nice rings to them. C.C. Braxton was one of the first African-American teachers in Prince William County where she taught for 33 years. Also as an activist in the 1960s, she fought to desegregate not only public schools, but also restaurants, beauty salons, and et cetera. Because of her hard work and dedication, her daughter was the first African-American kindergartner accepted into Manassas, segregated Manassas Presbyterian program. Carol Braxton was born and raised in Manassas it still lives around the corner from Stonewall Jackson High School within minutes. Mr. Braxton dedicated his life to serving his country during World War II and the Korean War, becoming one of the first African Americans to integrate the Marine Corps. He was also one of the first African American drill sergeants in the Marine Corps. As a Muffet Point Marine, he was also awarded the Congressional Gold Medal. I will end this by saying, it would be nice if one of each schools could be named after both, but if you can only pick one, combine the two, C.C. Braxton. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak. God bless you. Our next guest is Melissa Ridge. You're my kid's ally. Oh, fuck. Yeah, that's... Melissa Ridge, your mic is live. Ms. Ridge, are you there? All right, we will circle back. Our next guest is Langston Carter. Your mic is now live. Langston Carter, 
Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good evening, members of the board. My name is Langston Carter and my address is on file. I'm a longtime advocate for students and teachers in our community. And I'm a member of the Prince William County Historical Commission, but tonight I'm not speaking on official commission business. I'm speaking to, to you tonight uh, to inform you that the petition to name Stonewall Jackson High School after Dr. Ibram Kendi has received more than 32,000 signatures. In reviewing these signatures, you will find that even with the thousands of signatures from outside of our county, this petition still has more local signatures than any other petition for a different name. I think you should also take into account the fact that the name is, has been supported by two of Stonewall Jackson's great-great-grandsons, Jack and Warren Christian, as well as, this, as several descendants of Jackson's slaves, including myself and my siblings, who are all former students from Prince William County Schools. At this point, unless you change the name of Stonewall Jackson High School to honor somebody who is diametrically opposed to who Jackson was, then this change will be purely performative and cosmetic. As Angela Davis said famously, in a racist society, it is not enough to be non-racist. We must be anti-racist. Dr. Kendi is one of the world's leading anti-racist scholars, and he graduated from Stonewall Jackson High School. It's time for Prince William County to step up and create an anti-racist learning environment. I hope you take the number of signatures in that, that this petition has received, both nationally and locally, into account when you vote tonight. If you don't choose the name Ibram X. Kendi, I encourage you to name it after Governor L. Douglas Wilder, the, Braxton, the, the Braxtons, or Lucinda Griffin, one of the people Jackson actually fought to keep enslaved. We need a name that not only changes it from Jackson's, but also stands in direct contrast to his legacy. Thank you. Our next guest is Gabriela Silva. Your mic is muted on your side. All right, she just disappeared. We will go to... All right, Denise McPhail, your mic is now live. Good evening, Chairman Lateef, school board members, Dr. Waltz and Stonewall Naming Committee. Thank you for allowing me this time to speak this evening. Thank you for your willingness to change the name of the school. My name is Denise McPhail. I reside in the Neabsco district and you have my address information on file. I am here tonight to join the chorus of voices in support of Mrs. Celestine Braxton and Mr. Carol Braxton. Mr. and Mrs. Braxton have in common each of the consideration items listed on your facilities development regulation 854-1, geographic, historical, and name of a deceased person. Geographic consideration. Mr. and Mrs. Braxton have lived in Manassas a collective 155 years. Historical and deceased consideration. Prior to her demise, Mrs. Braxton gave 33 years to Prince William County Public Schools and served this community as a civil rights activist by integrating the Prince William County teaching staff. Mrs. Braxton educated students at Antioch McRae, Jenny Dean, Marstella, and even Stonewall Middle prior to retiring from Marstella. Historical and national service consideration. Mr. Braxton, a congressional gold medal recipient and United States Marine Master Gunnery Sergeant retired, <gasps> was one of the 20,000 African-American Marines from 1942 to 49 who received basic training at the segregated facility Montford Point in Jacksonville, North Carolina. He was one of the first dozen drill sergeants. And I know I'm running out of time, um, but I want you to know that um, now that the communities are protesting for reconciliation, healing, and equality of uh, the very issues that Braxton strive for, today I join in solidarity 
with the Braxton Chorus of supporters to ask you to name either the high school or middle school after Celestine and Cal Braxton. Again, thank you for your time and consideration. Have a good evening. Our next guest is Ben Kim. All right. Um, we have heard ideas of renaming Stonewall Jackson High School Reed United. I can see the merits of a name like this. It is a nice blend of two important things to our school. However, I can see how some people could maybe criticize the name. Um, they may ask why you know, for a high school to be named after a person of color that the person's name must be combined with another word and you know, not just stand alone by itself. You know, why must a person like Mr. Reed have to live up to a sort of double standard? Others might point out that if the school has a half of a person's name, why not just go the full distance and name it after his whole name? Stonewall community loves the name Arthur. A name like Arthur Reed High School implies unity in itself. The Stonewall students and staff are united behind this name. The advantages of naming Stonewall Jackson High School Arthur Reed High School are as followed. Arthur Reed High School is a name most important to Stonewall and should be proud of it as they may be seen. Two, in this time of police brutality, Mr. Reed is a symbol of a benevolent security officer who cared about the students and he trained officers so that we would have the best agents in the field. Three, finally, Mr. Reed is an inspiration to the youth at Stonewall. He was someone who fought to save lives in his community and he devoted his life towards mentoring youth. He's a local hero and naming our school after him would be a message to our students that society does not just honor the Martin Luther Kings and the Rosa Parks, but the overlooked heroes in our community. Going off at of this point, I've enjoyed learning about all the local heroes who, who have contributed to our society. I think we all agree that we should honor not only the great figures, but also the Arthur Reeds, Braxton's, Griffins, Bowser's, and so many more. Regardless of the vote tonight, we will continue to share the legacies of these local heroes. At Stonewall, we have cultural celebrations such as the Black History Month Assembly, where we could share the stories of Reed and the families of Braxton's and, the, and Lucinda Griffin could also come and share about them. Dr. Kennedy could come and speak too. We also have a one of us orientation where the upperclassmen guide the incoming freshmen around our school. During this tour, we will share about the naming of our school with the newest members of our communities. We have many murals around the school and we could paint more of these local heroes. So I just wanna say just to all the heroes around our community working right now on the board and in, in our schools, thank you. And your work will not go unrecognized. Thank you. Our next guest is Bishop Andre Alston. Your mic is muted on your side. Bishop Andre Alston, you just need to unmute. Your mic is live. Last call before we circle back, Bishop Andre Alston. All right, we will circle back. Moving on to our next guest, Michelle Davis Younger. Come on, can you hear me? We can. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening, school board. Um, thank you for the time to come before you. I am Michelle Davis Younger. I am a lifelong resident of Manassas. I currently live in the city of Manassas. I um, am appealing to you tonight to express my full support in the renaming of both Stonewall High and Stonewall Middle. I am in, in support of the schools being named for the Braxtons and for Lucinda Griffin. I am a 1987 graduate of Stonewall Jackson High School, and I had the pleasure of having Mrs. Braxton as a teacher at Marsteller. Imagine the pride I had in seeing a teacher that looked like me. Um, I currently attend First Baptist Church, and I have with the Braxton family ever since I was 14 years old, and I've known this family very well. Doubly for me, I am a descendant of Lucinda Griffin. So um, she's a, a relative on my mother's side. And having my mother, who is 83 years old in August, to be able, and also a lifelong resident of Manassas, to be able to see a school named after Lucinda would be an absolute honor for her. Um, and, and, and the legacy to continue would be outstanding for our family. I do not envy you having to make this decision among so many great choices, but I certainly appreciate the opportunity to participate in the process. 
Thank you and God bless you. Our next guest is Rockefeller Twyman. Rockefeller Twyman. I'll be able to circle back. Nicole King Campbell, your mic is now live. Good evening. My name is Nicole King Campbell and my address is on file. I'm a parent, a community advocate, and I'm the president of the Stonewall Jackson High School PTSO. I had suggested Innovation or Innovation Park High School, but unfortunately, neither made the cut. That being said, I think that over 700 submissions show that many are happy that the name will be changed. That is awesome. And thank the board and Dr. Waltz for all your hard work. We are just awesome. waiting for you to vote on the best name for Stonewall. But first I wanna keep in mind that Stonewall High School is already a school. They already have spirit. They just need a better name and more funding. What should it be changed to? After communicating to other parents, interested parties, and most importantly, students, teachers, staff, parents and other community members, I cannot help but agree with utilizing Arthur Reed if we're naming after the school after a person or Unity or Reed United if we decide to go in another direction. We have heard many great names. Um, Dr. Kennedy is a Stonewall grad and he's leading change in the country. But I think maybe if we decided we could have a center in the high school named after him, that would help us advocate more for racial equality in the country. And perhaps we could um, look at naming the 14th high school after the Braxton's. I believe some of the other names suggested would be more appropriate for the new school, that new school, or even the middle school. In fact, given what we have learned about Marcella, that is needing to be renamed as well. Lucinda Griffin or Mrs. Braxton would be more than perfect for that. The reason this is so important to me is we already have a spirit at Stonewall. This is not a new bill that we just put in a name on that people will be learning about the history. We, we already have people at the school that have inspired the students today and will continue to inspire the students. Um, I believe that Mr. Reed, or if we went with Reed United or Unity High School is more effective for the students that are going to enter the tour for the first time whenever we open back up, as well as the current students who have been amazing leaders in the community. It is so important that we don't just impose another name on them. It's almost like not even changing the name in a way. So we really should listen to the students, the teachers, the parents, and work with um, all these other trailblazers and history makers to find ways to better recognize them in the county instead of just imposing them on Stonewall. So I really would like to suggest again, um, just checking my time, Read United, Author Read, or a combination. Thank you so much. Our next guest is Edward Colson. Hello, this is Brett Colson. I live in the Potomac District. Can you hear me? We can hear you. Great. I I was I know uh, this name has not come up uh, on your list, but it, I was wanted to recommend John Sidebottom, who was an African American uh, who served in the Revolutionary Armies. He was the first African American from Prince William County to serve in what became the United States Army. Um, he was in the Prince William Minutemen in 1775 and then enlisted in the 3rd Virginia Infantry, both in Dumfries. And uh, he was, he's was he been noted for having at the Battle of Trenton, um, rescuing James Monroe, who was severely wounded during the action there. Uh, and John carried him off the battlefield and saved his life so that he could become president of the United States. Um, he was uh, he was discharged after spending the winter at Valley Forge and then return, returned home to Virginia and uh, was given 1,000 acres of land in what became Kentucky 
and he lived there until he died in 1823. Uh, but he had a, a very honorable service in the United States Army. And as I said, he was the first African-American from Prince William County to serve in what became the United States Army. Thank you. We have Lillian Rucker, who's not in. Rebecca Rebus is not in. Don Haight. Height, Mr. Height. Members of the board, thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you tonight. My name is Donald Height Jr. My address is on file. I am a direct descendant of Lucinda Griffin. Lucinda is my great great grandmother. The Lucinda Griffin Foundation can be reached at info at lucindagriffinfoundation.org. And I will state to you once again the need to name change to reflect a person that is inclusive rather than exclusive a role model that all ages can look up to, a role model that has withstood the test of time. Lucinda Griffin has been our role model for close to 160 years. This equates to eight generations. A whole new, the legacy of Lucinda Griffin is approaching a whole new milestone. I would not be surprised to see a movie done about her and we would welcome it with open arms. This story needs to be told. Before long, the world will know Lucinda's story, the story of hope, courage, the story of a little black girl, the age of 14, that took a bullet for her country. There are people now that are afraid to wear masks to protect their fellow Americans against the coronavirus that is simply shameful. Lucinda Griffin is and will always be an American hero, a patriot at age 14. Think for a minute, what were you doing at age 14? Riding a bike, fishing, playing soccer, or football? Lucinda was protecting an elderly white woman, therefore etching her name in the history books for the first Battle of Manassas Bull Run as the first African-American to be wounded in the Civil War. Ladies and gentlemen, there is only one first. As time goes on, there's growing support to name one of these schools after Lucinda Griffin. At last check, our petition was well over 1,600 in building momentum by the minute. Lucinda made history at age 14, which is approximately the same age as a kid in the middle school. Therefore, I feel that they can be reached more and appropriate that an African-American at the age of 14. I suggest that you name the Lucinda Griffin Middle School. Once again, the Lucinda Griffin Foundation can be reached at info at lucindagriffinfoundation.org. And may God guide you and select the best candidate, respectfully, Donald Hay Jr. And thank you. Our next guest is Karen Kura. Hello. Good evening, uh, members of the board. My name is Karen uh, Griffin Kura, resident of Woodbridge, Virginia, 22191. I am a descendant of Lucinda Griffin. I believe that everyone that uh, spoke on behalf of Lucinda Griffin uh, uh, gave uh, a good reason why one of these schools should be named in her honor. As a 14-year-old girl who was wounded at the first battle of Manassas, Lucinda paved the way for those that grew up in the Jim Crow and civil rights era. Lucinda suffered tremendous hardship under white supremacy, for minorities today to have opportunities in the fields of education, government, law enforcement, and military service. Many have stood on the shoulders of heroic people and freedom fighters of forgotten time like my ancestor, Lucinda Griffin. I want everyone to remember that Lucinda was a forgotten hero while Stonewall Jackson was a remembered traitor. The petition to rename one of Stonewall Jackson schools to Lucinda Griffin have received over 1,500 signatures. Her story should be in the country's history books and she is deserving of having her name grace the middle school to, to be uh, an inspiration to every boy and girl that attends this school, Lucinda Griffin Middle School, the home of the freedom fighters. Thank you for your time and consideration in renaming a school in Prince William County in her honor. I yield my time back to you. Thank you so much. 
Our next guest is Gary Long. Your mic is now live. Thank you. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to speak. My address is on file. My name is Gary Long. I'm married to Monique Long, who is the great great granddaughter of Lucinda Griffin. I'm here to recommend that you rename either or both schools in question to Lucinda Griffin High School and Lucinda Griffin Middle School. Lucinda Griffin wasn't famous per se or wealthy, but her bravery has made significant contributions to Manassas history. She was a 14 year old rented out slave in 1861, when ironically, one of General Stonewall Jackson's brigades fired a cannon into the home of Judith Hengry during the first Battle of Bull Run, killing Judith Hengry and permanently injuring Lucinda Griffin. That made Lucinda Griffin the first African American wounded in the Civil War. She survived, and the Griffin family has remained residents of, Prince, of Manassas, Prince William County for over 200 years. Now is the time to make a difference. Now is the time to tell the true history of Virginia. Prince William County had more slaves than residents in the 1800s. By naming the school Lucinda Griffin, you will uh, set the pace, the beginning, for people to look into her lives and look into the lives of what happened to former slaves. What are they doing now? What are their descendants doing now? And you'll find out that the descendants prospered, prospered right here in Manassas in Prince William County. So what better way to honor Lucinda Griffin, the Griffin family, Manassas, and Prince William County residents, African-Americans, and all citizens to, na to, uh, to name her the name of the school, Lucinda Griffin High School. Thank you. Our next guest is Angela Montiera. Hi, can you hear me? I can. Okay. Good evening. My name is Angela Montero, and I am a rising senior at Stonewall Jackson High School, and I attended Stonewall Middle School. For Stonewall Jackson High School, I propose the name United or Reed United High School. For Stonewall Middle School, I would suggest Commonwealth Middle School. Whenever I hung around in the halls after school from clubs, I came to perceive that these students of different races and social classes are people I am pleased to call my peers and some even my role models. I encountered these individuals through clubs that encourage constructive change and spread culture, as well as in my classes through the IB program, which is a program that allows students from around the globe to learn together to create a better world. Arthur E. Reed, a popular name choice for our school, has also achieved bettering the community and indirectly helps this long needed name change. He is honorably recognized with a memorial garden in our school yard. To acknowledge him even more, we can use his name to show that all staff, including himself and students, leave a legacy. Our strength and togetherness will help get its recognition with this name. After all, our motto is one of us. In regard to Stonewall Middle School, Commonwealth conveys a similar meaning, defining that individuals are united for the common good. Stonewall Middle School is also a highly diverse school where many take on the IB program. I remember teachers constantly upholding this name by complimenting kids on their abilities and students beginning to understand the importance of interacting with people of different origins. They encompass the overcoming of the obstacle to get rid of such a derogatory word that is the name of these current schools. We combat the negative remarks together from other parents and students in this county for being quote unquote run down, and run down together. Also keep in mind, Commonwealth and unity are definitions that do not change. In the end, no matter what my stance is, I sincerely ask to consider only the student body, staff and alumni when making part of the decision as this is part of our history. Thank you to those who have give, given suggestions and shared remarkable stories and people, and thank you for this opportunity. All right, our next guest is Kenny Griffin. Your mic is muted on your side. Can 
Mr. Griffin, you'll need to unmute your mic. There you go. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I've heard some different names uh, suggested and, you know, the fact that we're moving in this difficult time, I just want to say that I hope it's not a knee jerk reaction. Uh, we consider everything that's considered and actually making more than just a name change, uh, making curriculum change to teaching all inclusive history. But me being the last of the surname of Lucinda Griffin's father and a direct descendant, I definitely suggest her for one of the schools. Um, you know, I've heard different arguments for different people. Uh, uh, Mr. Reed, while being such a nice guy, as I can uh, gather, he's been to the school nine years. So what does that say to the people that have been from the 60s to now uh, that don't even know him um, for a name of the school? Um, Lucinda Griffin was a 14-year-old slave girl that actually took lead. I've said this again. I hate to repeat myself that, uh, you know, was wounded in the first battle of Bull Run. Her story has been wiped away in history, and it's been wiped away because we don't teach all-inclusive history in our schools. So uh, this is a minuscule step to a larger progression, I hope. And I submit my name for Lucinda Griffin uh, to one of the names of the school. Thank you for your time. I give you your 30 seconds back. Great. Our next guest is Beverly Williams. Your mic is now live. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and members of the school board. My name is Beverly Griffin Williams. Thank you for this opportunity to address you. A comment was made last Thursday by a citizen. I believe her name was Mrs. Compton, who stated comments that were made should be verified. I agreed with the caller and would like to assist you in the research. Number one, the mentioning of the name Lucy Griffith is a slang name given to my two times great grandmother, whose true name is Lucinda Griffin. There is a number two, there is a plaque next to the Henry House at the Manassas National Battlefield Park that states Lucy Griffith lived in the house. Number three, the National Park has listed in one of its official booklets on page 19 under determining the facts, reading number three, some events connected with the life of Judith Carter Henry. On Sunday, July the 21st, 1861, Mrs. Judith Henry, her daughter Ellen, and hired colored girl Lucy Griffith were living at Spring Hill Farm with Hugh, one of Mrs. Henry's sons, coming and going frequently to look after them. Number four, on page 26 of the booklet, I quote, after the battle, soldiers viewed the conflict much as J.W. Reed did as a terrifying, horrible experience in which thousands of men were killed and wounded. The civilian population of the nation, nation also was affected by the events at Manassas. Those who lived near the battlefields, like the Henrys, had their livelihoods ruined because the battles were fought on their property. Number five, since slaves were considered property at that time, Lucinda's injuries were not written up in the accounts recorded. She was considered ruined property. Thank you very much for considering the renaming of one of the Stonewall Jackson schools to the name of Lucinda Griffin. If I need to do further research, I will be happy to do so. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Our next guest is Jasmine Williams. Hello, can you hear me? We can. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Greetings, members of the board. My name is Jasmine Williams, and my address is on file. I am a descendant of Lucinda Griffin. Lucinda Griffin is not known to many in the area, but she should be. She was an enslaved teenager when the first battle of Manassas occurred in 1861. During that time, she was wounded, but she persevered. She persevered through times of hardship and uncertainty. Lucinda was never given an advantage in life, and she had to deal with life as it came. She persevered, and because of this, her ancestry runs deep in Prince William County. Isn't this an attribute we all want our children to have? Persevere through hard times when school is difficult and you don't understand? Persevere during your freshman year when the courses are new 
and you are not sure how to succeed, continue to persevere all the way through your senior year to help you get to your next step of life. Persevere even though you live in a world that doesn't want to see you succeed or treat you differently based on the color of your skin. With that being said, naming the school after Lucinda Griffin, I recommend the motto being changed to persevering while ascending. While many names have been suggested last week and tonight, Lucinda is worthy of her recognition. Thank you for your time and heavy consideration of changing the name to Lucinda Griffin High School or Lucinda Griffin Middle School. Thank you so much. All right, our next guest is EJ Scott. Your mic is now live. Thank you, my name's EJ Scott and um, my information is on record. Uh, because we know so little about those who endured enslavement uh, and what they did once they emerged, I'd like to see one of the schools named after William Lomax, the former enslaved man who built the homes on Liberty Street and whose descendants helped to build this community. Williams Lomax uh, has a deep and abiding connection to this area, and even though he could not read or write, he and his family were major supporters of African-American schools uh, and the county system. Lomax served in the Union Colored Infantry during the Civil War. When uh, the war ended, he returned here and purchased 11 acres with his earnings. Then in 1870, he built his home and allowed the first school for African-Americans uh, in the entire country, county uh, to be built on part of his land, the Manassas Village Colored School. It was the only the second public school in all of the county and later became the Brown School. It still sits as a private historic home uh, on Liberty Street today. Uh, the other public school was a white school. Uh, William Lomax's son, Daniel, and his family worked with Jenny Dean and were also influential in getting the Manassas Industrial School built. The Lomax family has been an intricate part of the community. After his grandson returned from serving in World War I, George Lomax was one of the petitioners uh, to the U.S. Armed Service to get the first American Legion post that accepted uh, blacks uh, in the entire country. The American Legion post still sits on Centerville Road uh, in Manassas and is a designated historic landmark. William and his family have an incredible history. And when William first purchased his first plot of land, he signed with an X. After, his, after he um, got ready to turn it over to his son, he signed his entire name. So he not only uh, was concerned with educating others, he also continued to educate himself. And I believe William Lomax is a, well, someone that we should honor with the name of one of the schools. Thank you. All right, at this time, we will circle back through the list to give the opportunity to people who had technical difficulties, uh, share with the board their thoughts. I'll start with Alyssa Macaranas. Your mic is unmuted. Hello. We can hear you. Okay, yay, thank you. Okay, Excellent. thank you. Thank you to the members of the school board and naming committee for this opportunity to speak. My name is Alyssa Macaranis and my address is on file. I am also a 2015 graduate from Stonewall Jackson High School. I did not know him personally, but I believe that the high school should be named after Arthur Reed. I also went to Philip Michael Pennington School, where the students lived by the morals and values of its namesake, who had a profound impact on the Manassas community. You were not simply there to learn curriculum, but you were also there to grow as an individual. For me and most students, we did not have that same connection with the name Stonewall Jackson. Even if I did not have that connection with Stonewall, what made my experience at SJ great was the people. So we should name it after a local member of the community. And from what a lot of SJ students have said in these meetings, someone like Arthur Reed embodies the values that students want to have in their school name. During my time at SJ, I was co-president of a call, club called Pure Diversity that was created by the Anti-Defamation League. During those interactions in the club, Stonewall had its own dynamics internally, and we were able to open up the conversation by acknowledging the differences and realizing we all do not go through the same thing. In this situation, just because the name does not affect me directly or my ancestors, it does not mean we should turn a blind eye on Black SJ students and students of color in the county. My main takeaway from the club was the biggest impact starts at the local level. 
So please continue learning and taking action just like I was able to at SJ. For years, SJ students have had to prove to other students, parents, and admin in the county that we could even be seen as competitive as the other schools. We knew families wanted to rezone the lines to not go to Stonewall because of race and class. In my years at Stonewall, I saw my fellow students and specifically students of color excel from academics to sports to music on the local, state, and national level. Now is the time for the county to prove that we are worthy of finally being heard. The least that should be done is changing the name of the schools. Learning that current students have the same sentiment I had half a decade ago says a lot. Shout out to the current students and faculty from SJ, HS, and MS continuing the fight. And as fellow SJ friend Kendra Barr said, thanks for being one of us, and now hopefully we get to choose one of us. Great. Our next guest is Monique Braxton. Your mic is muted on your side, Monique Braxton. You hear me okay now? We can. Fabulous. Good evening, board chair and members. Thank you for allowing community testimony as you embark on a challenging task of renaming Stonewall Jackson High and Stonewall Middle Schools. Thank you for allowing me to speak a second time about why one of the schools should be renamed after my parents, Celestine and Carol Braxton. Their legacies as a public school, elementary and middle school teacher and U.S. Marine and Department of Defense leader are well-documented. More than 155 collective years in Prince William County, serving their community here and the country in numerous roles. This evening, I wanna share why they would be an inspiration for students today. Growing up Braxton, my family embodied both of the school's Raiders and Sabres spirits. One of the four schools my mom served was Stonewall Middle. I was a member of the first freshman class to enter the halls of the new Stonewall High and first senior class to study for four years, then graduate. I was senior class president, fashion reporter on the drill team and the first Miss Stonewall of color. My brother Bob was an athletic star playing football, basketball and running track who was constantly reminded to keep his grades high. Because of our school involvement, our home was constantly filled with classmates as well as friends from First Baptist Church. When any young person stopped by, they usually had my dad's waffles while hearing stories of growing up in Manassas and what life was like in the Marine Corps. My mom would often ask everyone, first, if your parents knew you were here, what your life plan was, and where you wanted to go to college. When we hosted parties, they were supervised by adults. If we asked about having beer, we were told, I don't care what other people do at their homes. It's not happening here. Imagine having a teacher and a Marine as parents. And when the parties ended, everyone was encouraged to go to church on Sunday. My parents felt love for children and encouragement. I believe that would be an inspiration for all students today in renaming Stonewall Middle or Stonewall High after my parents, Celestine and Carol. Thank you so much and God bless you. Right, we'll circle back to Melissa Ridge now. Hi, uh, can you hear me? We can. Awesome, thank you so much. Good evening, my name is Melissa Ridge. Um, approximately 25 years ago, then Superintendent Dr. Edward Kelly was asked about changing the names of the middle school and the high school. And at that time, Dr. Kelly stated there was no reason to do that because Stonewall Jackson was an honorable man who didn't own any slaves. It took me five minutes at Chin Library to find the names of six of his slaves. Um, at the time, I had just given birth to my daughter, who was a direct descendant of some, one of Stonewall Jackson's slaves, and according to our family history, a direct descendant of Jackson as well. Um, so at that time, 25 years ago, my family advocated to change the name. Six years ago, my son Langston was in eighth grade, and he petitioned to change the name. He and his older sister and younger brother were tired of seeing this man and his legacy honored so casually. Over the years, he has spoken out against the name and against other forms of systemic racism found in our schools, because at its core, it's all part of the same issue. A school system that insists on glorifying Confederate general is pushing a deliberate false narrative. A school district that refuses for generations to change the name is through complicity, miseducating both students and the entire county. It impacts anyone who has seen the name, even casually. Um, I'm going to be advocating that you all change the name to um, Kendi 
to um, Ibram X. Kendi Senior High School. Um, because as a graduate of Prince William County Schools, we have the responsibility of honoring those students who have moved, moved forward and done something with their life. In his work, Dr. Kennedy has been honest about his experience. He wasn't always the best student. Um, like my sons, when they were in Prince William County School, he faced the same systemic racism that still permeates the, the, the system. Um, I know my time is running down um, at this point. In changing the name of both the high school and middle school, I'm asking you to consider names that are in direct opposition to Stonewall Jackson. Choose a name that will start conversation that reverses the false narrative preserved by the system for so long. Choose the name of someone who has had an impact not only within the walls of the school, but also throughout the community. Because the name Stonewall Jackson impacted more than just those inside the school. If not Abram Kendi, please consider Lucinda Griffin or Celestine Braxton, both of whom also stood in direct defiance of white supremacy. Thank you very much. Great, we'll circle back to Bishop Andre Austin now. Your mic is muted on your side. Do you hear me now? We can hear you. Oh, great, praise God. Okay, um, my name is Bishop Andre Austin. My address is on file. Uh, I have heard, I've been listening to the board's uh, uh, possible nominees for the last two sessions and tonight. And there's nothing new that I can say as far as Carol, Celestine and Carol Braxton, except that if you look at a person, you look at the holistic uh, involvement of the person, you have to then take, in, take into account not only their education, not only their community, not only their faith and religious values. Both these individuals have taken that. They were trailblazers. And being trailblazers, that means you have to step out of your comfort zone. And so I asked that consideration would be given because not only was uh, she 33 years in the Prince uh, George County school system, she was also accepted in the county school system in 1950, which puts her at 64 years, okay, in uh, the county system of education. She did not stop with a bachelor's, she went on and got a master's. Well, uh, 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 Carol Braxton did not stop at the first negative comment a uh, comment made to him, but he was a trailblazer to open up the Marine Corps. I believe we're at a time now that we need to have role models, people in which we can look at, people in which we can emulate, people in which we can uh, try to even follow some steps. And I think you would make a good decision if you selected Celestine or Carol Braxton for either your middle school or your high school. Thank you for taking time to hear me. All right, and the last person we'll circle back with is Rockefeller Timon. Rockefeller Twinen. I'm seeing he doesn't have the equipment to be able to speak. So Chairman Latif, that's everybody who has signed up to comment and is present. Okay, thank you gentlemen, uh, Mr. Townsend and Mr. Stevens for um, organizing another um, set of citizen comment time. That brings our um, citizen comment numbers from the two committee meetings and tonight to um, over 150 comments taken by citizen comments in our meetings. Um, we can add that to the enormous amount of interest and in emails that the school board has gotten, numbers of petitions, um, activity on social media, um, press related articles. This clearly is something that um, um, everybody is very interested in and, uh, and and we have engaged the public I think better than we have in um, in in or not better than we have but we, they have been engaged with us in, in ways that um, we haven't seen in on, on any topic other than obviously the reopening that's coming up now that's been very engaging as well so I would like to um, when I put the agenda together 6.03 which is the approval of the board poll should have really been 6.01 and I would like to move this item to, because I think it's important to go ahead and validate the poll that got us to this point. 
if we can, um, a motion is in order, Ms. Williams. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Chairman. I move that, can you hear me okay? Yes, ma'am, go ahead, sorry. All right, I move that the uh, Prince William County School Board approve the poll of June 18th, 2020, specifically approving the initiation of the school renaming process for Stonewall Middle School and Stonewall Jackson High School through a meeting of the school naming committee on June 22nd, 2020 and a special school board meeting on June 29th, 2020. Um, yep, that's great. I think we should, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that, that's actually good. Do I have a second? Ms. Ralston seconds. Thank you, Ms. Ralston. Any discussion? As seeing there's no discussion, we'll go ahead and take the roll call. I'll do that again in alphabetical order. Ms. Jackson, how do you vote on the board poll? Yes. Ms. Jackson votes yes. Ms. Jesse, how do you vote on the board poll? I got stained the last time. Thank you. How do you vote, Miss Jesse? I couldn't hear you. I'm sorry. When the poll came out, uh, for reasons that if you want to discuss, we can. Well, the floor was open for discussion, but did, did I didn't hear your vote. What was your vote? Abstention. Abstention. Okay. Sorry about that. I, I mis misheard you. Miss Jesse abstains. Uh, Latif, I vote yes. Miss Ralston. Miss Ralston, I read your lips. It looked like yes to me. Yes. Yes, Ms. Ralston votes yes. Great, thank you. Um, Mr. Wilk? Yes. Mr. Wilk votes yes. Ms. Wall? Yes. Ms. Wall votes yes. Ms. Williams? Yes. Ms. Williams votes yes. Ms. Zargapur? Yes. Great. Okay, at this time, I had um, conferred with the committee. We will be taking a break till Can approximately... I'm Hello. sorry, Ms. Jesse. Yes, Miss Jesse. We had a discussion. We already had called for the discussion. No one had answered. I'm sorry, I missed that. Okay. Can I um, please explain my vote at, at least right now, if you could. It's possible. We, we did. We, we we put your vote as abstention. Is that correct? Yes, and I abstain because this uh, did not come before the board initially, and we don't have a sense of cost for this project but I support the renaming. Thank you. Okay, so at this point I've conferred with the committee has asked because of the, the citizen comment time, uh, we will take a 20 minute recess and um, return at seven. Jason Stevens, please put up for um, 7.35. The school board will return to vote on um, the motions listed on the agenda for the renaming and um, we will take a recess for 20 minutes. 7.35, we will return. Thank you. Okay, um, we are uh, returning from the recess. We will now move to board matters 6.01, the renaming of Stonewall Middle School. This is on for action. Ms. Jen Wall, do you have a motion? Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I do. I move that the Prince William County School Board Rename Stonewall Middle School, Unity Braxton Middle School, and name Unity Braxton Middle School Auditorium in honor of John G. Miller, and adopt the proposed formal resolutions for each. All right. <clears throat> Did I read the resolutions? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, whereas, this is the renaming of the Stonewall Middle School. Whereas the Prince William County School Board has listened to the voices of the citizens of Prince William County, and whereas the citizens of Prince William County have expressed their overwhelming support for the renaming of Stonewall Middle School, and whereas we must learn from our history and remember the past, but in ways that support equality and respect for all people, and whereas we must, sorry, whereas the naming of schools is an important expression of community values, and whereas a school's name should bring diverse communities together and unite them under a common vision and ideal, and whereas the school's name should inspire, uplift, and motivate the school community to work toward a shared commitment to personal and academic achievement, and whereas Celestine S. Braxton served as an educator in Prince William County Schools for 33 years, and whereas Celestine S. Braxton taught at Antioch McRae Elementary School in Haymarket, 
during a period when Virginia schools were racially segregated, and whereas Celestine S. Braxton retired in 1983 after teaching at Marsteller Middle School and Stonewall Middle School, and whereas Celestine S. Braxton was a civil rights activist who persistently engaged in efforts to open the doors of all establishments in Prince William County to African Americans, and whereas Carol Braxton was a master gunnery sergeant in the United States Marine Corps and Congressional Gold Medal recipient, and whereas Carol Braxton was one of 20,000 of her African American Marines from 1942 to 1949 who received basic training at a segregated facility, Camp Montford Point in Jacksonville, North Carolina, and whereas Bra Carol Braxton served honorably in World War II and the Korean War, serving as a combat instructor and retiring in 1980, and whereas Celestine S. and Carol Braxton, two trailblazers advocating for equal rights their entire lives, served as an excellent role model, excellent role models in our community. <clears throat> now, therefore, be it resolved this 29th day of June, 2020, that the Prince William County School Board renamed the Stonewall Middle School Unity Braxton Middle School. I have an additional resolution regarding the naming of the auditorium. Shall I go for that at this time? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So this is a resolution naming the auditorium at Unity Braxton Middle School, formerly Stonewall Middle School in honor of John G. Miller. <clears throat> Whereas Prince William County Public Schools wishes when naming the Unity Braxton Middle School to also recognize the specific service contributions of Principal John G. Miller, and whereas Principal John Miller has served as the principal of Stonewall Middle School for the last 18 years and is one of the longest tenured principals in Prince William County, and whereas Mr. Miller has provided an outstanding example of selfless dedication and service to the Stonewall Middle School community over the last nearly 20 years, <clears throat> and whereas Mr. Miller was the fifth principal in five years at Stonewall Middle School and thus by his commitment to the school has provided a sense of stability and cont continuity over the years, and whereas Stonewall Middle School was authorized to become an IB World School in 2003 and was reauthorized four times, and whereas Principal John Miller encouraged his students to strive for educational excellence and under his leadership reached accreditation and achieved a national designation as a school to watch in 2011 through 14 and again in 2014 through 2017. And whereas Mr. Miller began programs like the eight-step process and the community liaison position, which have been adopted by other schools in Prince William County. And whereas Mr. Miller welcomed students to school each morning by saying, welcome to Stonewall Middle School, the best IB school, middle school in Prince William County because we have the best teachers, the best staff, the best parents, and you the best students. And whereas Principal Miller dedicated his career in education to empowering students, and this statement reminded them of that empowerment every morning. And whereas the auditorium was Mr. Miller's favorite place in the school, because this was the center of empowering students by celebrating their successes in many ways, including quarterly and yearly awards and musical concerts. And whereas Mr. Miller was so dedicated to this end that he would sign by hand every certificate awarded to a student, showing the students not only that he cared enough to take the time for them individually, but also that he saw the accomplishments of all of his students. And whereas Principal Miller would welcome speakers and guests to the auditorium, such as members from the Navy Band, world-renowned artists and authors, or his own teachers who showed students what they could be and who could accomplish after they left middle school. And the auditorium was one of his greatest tools in this achievement. Now, therefore, be it resolved this 29th day of June, 2020, that Prince William County School Board named the auditorium at the formerly known Stonewall Middle School, now known as the Unity Braxton Middle School, in honor of John G. Miller. Do I have a second for that motion? I second. Ms. Jackson seconds the motion. We will now open the floor for discussion. We will start with the committee members from the renaming committee first, and then we'll go around um, after that. So we'll start with Ms. Wall. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just wanna say, um, I wanna first thank all of my colleagues um, on the school board for their invaluable contributions, collaborations, ideas. Um, I want to thank Mr. Beavers and the planning staff. Um, they were tremendous. Um, and I wanna thank the naming committee in particular for their hard work. Um, we spent a lot of time researching and listening and answering emails, discussing and evaluating. So regardless of whatever we chose, I know there was so much work put into it. I just thank you all for that. Um, I want to thank members of the community who came and spoke so eloquent, eloquently to us um, through our online community input sessions and 
um, who have put up with this online environment that we're in and who have emailed us and called us, um, reached out to us in social media and other, uh, other venues. Um, it was really tremendous to hear from everybody. <clears throat> I wanna particularly acknowledge students who reached out. I know normally when we name a school, we don't, we don't have a student body already in place. Um, you already have a school, a, a culture, an identity. Um, you have the ways of doing things, a way of thinking about yourself. And so I know it's particularly difficult sometimes to go through this process, but you have been really wonderful and thank you. Um, <clears throat> we've received nearly 800 comments. I believe it was close to 800 and obviously an, incredibly num an incredible number um, of, of unique names were put forward, ranging from the most humble um, somebody like Lucinda Griffin um, to, you know, the most distinguished, the former governor of Virginia, um, Governor Wilder. And we had a lot of geographic names that were mentioned, um, historical names, and names that embody our highest American ideals, um, like liberty, um, justice, innovation. Um, we were impressed by all the options. And as, as you all know, this, this is a really difficult decision because there were so many really great choices. Um, but let me speak to the name of Unity um, for just a minute. Unity uh, represents the desire we have for our students at this time. Unity is a state of being united or joined as a whole. It means together. It means at one with others. It is the opposite of divided. It is oneness. Unity reminds the students to uplift, inspire, and support one another in their commitment to their common goal of academic excellence. And currently, Stonewall Middle has 35 different countries of origin represented by its student body. They are very diverse, and yet they are one. And unity represents what that school is and how they feel about themselves and what it is striving to be. It captures the way they look at themselves and their vision and their motto of being the best. So um, this unity is possible because of the efforts of remarkable and brave people like Celestine and Carol Braxton. They made it their life's mission to serve and lift others as teachers and as defenders of those who needed defending. Their efforts made the world a better place for those who followed. Carol, um, in his service to his country as a Marine and in time of war, and Celestine to our children. So in that sense, they were pioneers for equal rights and all of our students in PWCS directly benefited from their efforts and that's one of the um, things that I love about them. Um, Celestine in particular worked within the walls of the Stonewall Middle School building. Um, it is particularly appropriate that this school bear her name. She blazed the trail for her own child and others, children and child, her own children and others to be welcome in our public schools regardless of race. She is rightfully a hero for her efforts and for her dedication to educating all students. It is my honor to support the name Unity Braxton Middle School. Um, and Dr. Latif, should I, I have comments about the auditorium in particular? Shall I do that now? Um, sure, go ahead. And then okay. we'll go for everybody. Okay. So it is equally my honor um, to propose the name of the auditor, naming the auditorium after John G. Miller. Um, as stated in the resolution, he has dedicated the last um, 20 years to this school as an AP and then, and then as the principal for 18 years. And that's a remarkably long time. And he, he embodies um, so much of what is good at this school. Um, tenacity, dedication, service, a, a true love for the students. He's been a tremendous force for the good of the lives in, of an entire generation. When we're talking 20 years, we're talking a generation. He's an integral part of that community and his presence will be felt for a very long time. Um, the com community loves him and it's with greatest pleasure that I wish him a most happy and pleasant and well-deserved Retirement. Um, yeah, here we go. Thank you. Okay, Ms. Wall, thank you very much. Ms. Jackson. Hey, thank you, Chairman Latif. Um, I also want to thank the countless individuals who emailed, spoke, and took time out of their day to meet with us. It was an incredibly difficult process with many great suggestions. And in the end, renaming of Stonewall Middle School echoes the community's desire for a role model and a theme that embodies the school's community. The theme unity encompasses the staff's desire to speak to heritage and success of the school 
It also uh, connects to their stellar IB program. Celestine Praxton was an educator of 33 years, many at the middle school level. She taught at Stonewall and her children attended Stonewall High School. Mrs. Braxton played a crucial role in integrating the teaching staff in Prince William County. Her advocacy and commitment to civil rights led her to open many doors for Prince William County students today. Her husband, a congressional gold medal recipient, defended our con country in World War II and then returned to a segregated society. He continued to serve our country for many years. Both Braxtons are remarkable Prince William County citizens who are strong role models for the countless youth who will walk through the halls of Stonewall Middle School. Lastly, I greatly support the naming of the auditorium after Mr. Miller. He is loved his, by his school and he loved his school. He set high expectations for every student. He is an institution in that community and I thank him for his years of service. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Adele. I think I'll just say a few words here because I was on the committee. I want to I want to thank both of uh, both of you, uh, Mr. Beaver's office, the faculty and staff that we met that that you all met with at the at the school, the emails and the amount of work that went into this. Um, on the on the names, um, I, I think there's not much more to add than what you two have added. I think there's a lot more to add, and I don't think we have actually have enough time to add. We've heard. Um, from many folks about the accolades of the tremendous work the Braxton family has done uh, for our country and for our community. And I think it is, um, uh, uh, you know, um, from, from the naming committee's um, sort of a, um, guidelines, they, they really fit, fit the criteria for folks who have committed to our community and our schools. And so I, I think that's great unity. Um, you know, I think it's terrific. It's exactly what our community needs. It's what our board, I believe, hopes to achieve um, as we continue with the tremendous educational challenges we face, both first with the pandemic and just in general. Um, you know, I don't want it to be lost on anyone that uh, renaming is all this board is going to do. Um, we as a board have committed to um, improving student performance everywhere at all levels and for all students. That is a commitment that, um, you know, as many citizen comments said, you know, Dr. Latif, Chairman Latif, don't just rename the school. You have to do something substantive. And this board, I can tell you, works diligently daily on those issues. And I think unity is what really represents the way our country needs to go forward. Um, America is at its best when we are unified. And I believe that the Braxtons built um, and performed their lives with unity in mind, clearly at all times. Um, and so I, I think this is great. And, and I'll just add that, you know, on the auditorium, I think that's a, um, a, 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 a good, an excellent consideration and uh, a well-loved principal from the faculty who I think have dedicated a lot of time and effort over there. So next I'll go to, I will include Lisa because uh, I, I know some of her students may go to that school. So Lisa Zargapur next. Uh, thank you, Dr. Latif. Um, uh, I want to thank Mr. Beavers and uh, planning office to uh, planning staff for helping organize all of this and um, and then my colleagues on the board who have been really helpful bouncing ideas off of each other. Um, all of the people who came to speak. Um, this was really, really hard because uh, we weren't we weren't naming like Miss Wall said, we weren't naming a new school. We were naming a school with an, uh, an existing community. Uh, it has a student body. It has um, a quality to it already. And I'm, I'm really fortunate that on this board, we have several people who really listen to student voice and community voice, which were um, really important to all of us. Uh, the name Unity, as, as it has already been said, is, is a um, really important feature right now. We need this in our society more than any, any other time. Uh, well, maybe not any other time, but right now we're definitely feeling we need unity. And it's a great idea when an IB program that is um, educationally this, this um, just a, it's a, it's a, it's a really great program. And just to combine it with the idea of unity was, a, was a, a fabulous idea. And then the Braxtons, of course, um, just hearing all the testimonials um, from family, from people who known them for a while, um, reading all of the articles and the things that have been sent. Um, clearly, they are people to be honored and possibly not just in a school. Uh, I'm, I'm, I mean, Carol Braxton um, did many other things um, that, 
<laughs> I'm kind of st stuck here. It's it's just I'm overwhelmed with the the kinds of names and, and people that we've brought forward. So um, I echo all the comments previously spoken, and um, I will yield the rest of this time. Since you're on the screen, Ms. Williams, would you like to go next? Um, sure. Thank you. Chairman Latif, um, I am going to um, support this naming. Um, as we all know, I'm, I'm mostly a fan of naming schools after location. So I, I, I have to say that because that's what I'm used to saying. Um, but I think in um, this case, we, the naming committee did an excellent job. Um, I am a little bit more familiar maybe than um, some of my board members except maybe Ms. Jessie of some of the Ms. Braxton's history. Uh, she was, I believe, included in a play a few years ago by Ms. Denise McFell on um, the four teachers who integrated Prince William County. And um, I, I really appreciate the fact that the naming committee uh, took time and listened to not only the students, but the faculty and recognized that there's an existing culture. And I think it's just time. I, I, uh, Stonewall, Middle and Stonewall High School um, have sort of lived in this limbo of knowing that eventually we would get to this point, but not knowing when. And I think this really brings um, some closure to that school community and they can really be, as we are naming them, unified and moving forward um, together. I think adding the auditorium um, naming after the principal is a nice touch. It's a, it's a very appropriate send off uh, to someone who um, really had an impact in the school. Um, I know that it is an IB school and we have a few of those in Prince William County for our middle schools and IB is a wonderful program and it is a, a global, pro, you know, um, sort of a global perspective type of a program. And I think that the name really ref reflects our diversity in our student body and in our community. So I really appreciate that. I know it was not an easy decision to make, nor one that was made lightly. Um, there was plenty of conversation um, back and forth, I'm sure, between the naming committee, um, you know, calls to other board members, meeting with the community, answering emails. Um, I don't think the decision was made lightly, and I'm I'm very appreciative of the time and effort and consideration that was made on behalf of the naming excuse me committee. So I'm going to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Williams. I'm going to go to Mr. Wilk and then Mr. Stevens. If you could rotate um, Ms. Ralston, Ms. Jesse onto the screen and, and and us off as you wish. I'll start with Mr. Wilk. Yeah, I mean, a lot of what Ms. Uh, Williams said, uh, I echo. Um, I, you know, I've stated consistently um, since a lot of the dramatic name changes, one that I was in the center of, but um, I definitely, you know, support geographic locations and kind of words like unity or any of these things that we're hearing. Uh, but I've always remained uh, consistent that I would support uh, the decision that the members of the particular school with overlapping attendance areas wanted. Uh, so like Ms. Williams, I will support uh, the naming of this building. Um, I believe, you know, this will be a great addition uh, to our county. Uh, I think there's a lot of great ways of uh, giving our principals uh, the ability to kind of work on this uh, with their students, um, pick uh, maybe a new mascot uh, for the existing building and change up a few things. Uh, but try to really bring a unified uh, commitment to this building. Uh, you know, uh, everything, a, a lot of people have already highlighted a lot of the contributions of the Braxtons. Um, you know, I echo those, and I think that's very important. I'm very symbolic uh, to select them. Um, I do want to thank um, all three of my colleagues who were, well, Ms. Wall and Ms. Jackson. I guess Lisa had, uh, Ms. Agapur had a couple of kids in the zone. But uh, especially uh, Ms. Wall in the sense, um, you know, she... And I, we spoke a couple times about this and, uh, you know, the way she listened to her community uh, with this building, particularly and the thought and the amount of time, you know, she really led on this. Um, and I think it's just amazing and a true testament uh, to our board's uh, ability to work amongst one another uh, collectively uh, for uh, the same goals in mind and student achievement, equity, uh, and really promoting a unified as this, you know, building's going to say uh, in our county. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilk. Mr. Stevens, I'll go to Ms. Ralston, and then if we can get Ms. Jesse up, and then Dr. Waltz. Ms. Ralston? Can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear me. Okay, I like the smile on your faces. 
It says that you have done some great things today. Okay, so representation. Uh, thank you to all of the citizens for your comments. The name of a school is very important. We want all students to feel represented. And you guys have put it together for it to work that way. Um, thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Ralston. Um, Ms. Jesse? Hi, I um, I want to, to make a correction. Um, Mrs. Braxton was not a part of the, the what we call the Courageous Four. She was not in the first wave. She was in the second wave. The first wave consisted of um, Fanny Fitzgerald, and there were three other ladies. I think Mrs. McPhail talks about the Courageous Four that was done at. Uh, the uh, high school and the play that was put out at Colgate. Uh, in terms of the naming, I love the name of Unity. I'm wondering if the committee was as strong feelings that the Braxton's name, uh, did you consider Braxton Unity? I'm just afraid that the Braxton's name will be lost and the school will be called Unity by itself. I'm just wondering if you thought about uh, the Braxton was there any opposition to using the name of a school who has the person's name in front? Like they were talking about Reed Unity. Uh, have you considered, did you consider, or uh, is there any opposition to the practice name being first and Unity following? So um, I'll, let me just answer that real quick. If we did that, it would be B-U-M-S, and that would be bums. And I, 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 um, I'm not sure that would, that would be really good. And I think- B U M S Braxton Unity Middle School would be bums. Um, so you know, I, I think some thought had been given to the order of that, uh, Miss Jesse. Um, I, I think it's a great idea, but we, I think the the committee decided, you know, going back and forth a number of times on this, that we really felt that Unity Braxton um, really represented what um, I think the feeling of the general wider community was on 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 this, and that's from from my standpoint personally. But I'll let um, Jen and um, Adele address that as well. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Doctor uh, Latif, that if even if you had Braxton, that people would call it bums. But that's that's just not here. That. Uh, but anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Miss Jackson and Miss Waltz. Um, thank you, um, Miss Jesse, for your input. Um, as Doctor Latif mentioned, we spent uh, you know many days deliberating and listening to people and um you know considering the name order um the the focus group that we met with um were really interested in our theme and um the braxtons were also really important so it was in the end it seemed to be the best way to encompass how the community felt miss wall hey, uh, can I ask you, you met with a focus group, there was another group? We had um, some chats with some folks from this actual school um, in a very small informal like working group setting, just asking them what they thought of different ideas. Um, but I think Dr. Latif is correct. Um, you know, when you go to a music concert, um, I, I go to these all the time with my kids. Um, they always put the acronyms of the schools um, in parentheses and um, it would be B-U-M-S, and it wouldn't take middle schoolers long to figure out that and have that become, you know, a, a problem. So definitely unity needed to come first in that. Um, I think the community will call it Unity Braxton. They may even end up calling it Braxton um, because both schools have unity in front to distinguish the other two. I don't really know which way it will go with the community, but um, I have no doubt that Braxton will become a very... Um, prominent part of that name um, because it is distinguishing. I appreciate, yeah. I really, I really appreciate that. Uh, I wanna ask uh, a question that uh, perhaps is not the proper time to ask. Will we, Dr. Waltz is on the screen, will we at some point talk to the community about the costs and how this whole transition is going to take place? Is this a proper forum or? How we go because you, you know you you name you were the first one to come out with that and the board normally when you name a school you have the budget in front 
how is that going to work? Do we have any idea of how that's going to work and how will we share that information with the community? Um, Dr. Waltz, if, if you wanted to address that, I know the, um, the finance, the facilities office did send some cost um, estimates around. Um, uh, from my standpoint, you know, I, I, I will tell you that, um, and then I'll let Dr. Waltz answer. Um, and I've made this clear to the board members throughout the committee meetings and everything like that. Um, cost is, um, I think oftentimes, in my opinion, this is not to discount your real concerns because there are real concerns out there and we do have to spend the money on this and, and we will find the money, as I've stated before, to do this. Um, but cost is, in my opinion, long time too often used um, to continue what I believe is institutional racism. And in this matter, I believe the board looks at the naming as far more important than the renaming and the cost. And this is something that is way long overdue. Um, that is not to discount how much it's gonna cost. I think um, the board members will, will tell you that they've each addressed this with the principals. And, and I think Dr. Waltz may, may validate this or not, but we're gonna ask the principals and the school division to find the most efficient and cost-effective way to get this done. And, um, and they believe they, they can in those folks um, that I have talked to. Dr. Waltz? His mic is not. Well, I think his mic um, was. I think it's working now, is it? Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Thank you, Chairman Latif. Um, it's not on tonight's agenda, but let me just say in an overview that we will work very closely with the principals whom I have every confidence in. We will work with the school community and the students and staff at each of those schools. And we will make sure that those two schools uh, under the new names will have parity uh, with other middle and high schools. And so, you know, without being over, uh, overly extravagant, we will make sure that we have the changes whether it be to uniforms or insignia, uh, signs or, or whatever it takes, we will we'll do those things necessary to uh, make those schools uplifting and uh, on parity with all the other middle and high schools. Well, I want it to be on parity, uh, but at the same time, the budget situation is what is something, I don't think it's institutional racism. Uh, if you say we're there some budget considerations, I think that, uh, so as a board member, I did not get a lot of information on that. So I would like to have more information. And I would, I'm thinking, I'm wondering if we've considered phasing, I'm sure probably knowing uh, Mr. Beavers and Mr. Alf, Hiroshi and all these people, they're thinking about how we phase it in. But uh, I think the public has to know the cost and how we're going to come up with the money. That's just my uh, deal with it. And I want to congratulate the committee because I know how difficult it was to come up with this name. I appreciate the fact that, uh, you know, Mrs. Braxton did work at the middle school level. And I also appreciate the fact that she realized that her husband, being a Marine, I will share with you that um, my husband was the only African-American in his basic class. We have the photo. When we came to this area, we could put every black officer in Dr. Latif's office and have a party. That's how far we've come. So I want to congratulate the Braxton and I want to congratulate the committee. And also I want to congratulate the students and all the people who took the time to put the names forward. So congratulations to Monique uh, Braxton. Your father and your mother's name are going to be on the building. Thank you. Ms. Jesse, I, I, I don't know if I should take that as an insult as the size of my office is very small or... Um, um, I know, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Uh, I know Ms. Williams had one comment just on cost and, and then we will... Um, um, I'll have Dr. Waltz then address the name if he if he would like to, um, just the choice. Ms. Williams. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I just want to first say thank you to Ms. Jesse. I did get I'm a little, getting a little excited here in our celebrations of teachers. So I, I wanted to thank you for the correction on the Courageous Four. Um, I've been reading, uh, rereading about that and uh, actually found my playbill from attending uh, the play. So um, got a little carried away there in my African-American history with Prince William Stop. County. Um, but um, I do want to say that I think that the public should also know that there's a little bit of, um, I know it's not going to be a great deal of savings, but doing considering the school division is renaming three schools or naming three schools at the same time, um, you know, with my procurement back background, I had little bells and whistles going off thinking there's an advantage in some purchasing power there. So um, I hope that we take advantage of that as a division. It's not, of course, not up to the board because there are strict procurement procedures. And I know that we have an award-winning procurement department, but I just kind of want to throw that out there as opposed to under some other previous times where we're just buying one of everything at one time. Um, so that there's some little bit of savings to be had while we're doing this all now at the same time. So thank you. Thank you. Good. Dr. Waltz. Yes, thank you, Chairman Latif. First and foremost, congratulations to the school board and thank you for uh, accepting my recommendation a few weeks ago to rename these two schools and to do it on uh, such a quick timeline. I think one thing people are looking for right now is action. And certainly that's what this school board has determined to do. And so again, congratulations. And to the naming committee itself, I know you put in tremendous amounts of hours. And again, thank you to the planning office, Mr. Shiroki and his great team, uh, everyone involved. But first and foremost, you know, I've said this every so often, a superintendent can have ideas, but many of those ideas uh, require the support of the school board. And this is one of them. To name a school is in the sole authority of the school board. And I think this board has shown that it is willing to take courageous action. So uh, Unity Braxton Middle School uh, has a, a great sound to it. I think it's inspirational and uplifting. And I look forward uh, to working with the new principal uh, as we phase in the change of the name and also to congratulate Mr. Miller who has been the principal there my entire 15 year tenure. And we've worked on many exciting things Probably the most is expanding the International Baccalaureate Middle School program there. And as a school superintendent, I have to personally set on the review team every so many years, uh, a number of uh, individuals from International Baccalaureate come. They do site visits. Those are over several days. And they are in observing classrooms, speaking with teachers, looking at how the program is being implemented. And this middle and high school are literally a well-kept secret in many, many ways. They flourish in academics. They flourish in the arts. Um, I just remember one thing in particular that just was amazing to me, and that's uh, when we talk about the high school since we're transitioning, and that's the Origins Project. And again, they're an international baccalaureate school as well. So I think Mr. Miller has done a great job there. He's a loving, caring person, and he has lots of siblings who uh, and a wife who also work and are completely dedicated to this school division. And they're in several schools across our division. So I think it's an honor for him as well to have the auditorium. So again, to the school board, thank you so much. Job well done. And to everyone who was involved, thank you for your participation. Uh, thank you in particular. I love the fact that the students are so involved as well. So again, congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Wall. So Jen, Ms. Wall, do you have any further comments on this motion? If um, And then we'll take the vote as you wrap up. I would just say um, I, I look forward to um, getting into the action phase of this. Um, no, I made the decision, but moving forward, I hope that we do it thoughtfully, carefully, um, cost effectively, but not on the cheap. Um, I think um, I, I am concerned about costs. I think that we can work together with um, the division and the principals and um, you know get this going um, in a really good manner. Um, I think the time is right. Um, I think the, the will is there um, and 
uh, yeah, if we can do this, um, I know it's 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 a tough thing uh, from the money situation, but um, even if we can, I guess my final thoughts would be if we can involve, find a way to involve the community in this, whether it's through our Spark Foundation or through um, GoFundMe's or <laughs> anything else, I think there's a very um, untapped potential, a very large untapped potential in our larger Prince William County community to support this change if we play it right, if we work and use our resources, because a lot of people are really, um, their, their hearts are in it. So it would be nice to have, find a way to um, involve the community in, um, in, in bringing about these, these changes. That's just, those are just my final thoughts. Ms. Wall, I, I thank you. And I think at this point, I would like to call the vote and I will do that vote um, starting with the committee members first, and then I will go, I'll try to fi find some order to do it alphabetically. Um, this is the motion to rename Stonewall Middle School to Unity Braxton Middle School, and to also rename the auditorium after Mr. Miller. Um, Ms. Jennifer Wall of the Gainesville District, how do you vote? I vote yes. Ms. Wall votes yes. Ms. Adele Jackson of the Brentsville District, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Jackson votes yes. Ms. Lisa Zargapur of the Coles District, how do you vote? I vote yes. Okay, and then since I'm on the committee, Dr. Latif, I vote yes. Ms. Zargapur votes yes, Dr. Latif votes yes. Now we will go to Ms. Lily Jesse of the Occoquan District. How do you vote, Ms. Jesse? I vote yes. Ms. Jesse votes yes. Ms. Diane Ralston of the Neabsco District. Yes. Ms. Ralston votes yes. Mr. Wilk of the Potomac District. Yes. Mr. Wilk votes yes. Ms. Williams of the Woodbridge District. Vice Chair Williams. I vote yes. The hammer. Okay, good. Ms. Williams, excellent. Um, we are um, you unanimously in full support of Ms. Jennifer Wall's motion. Um, and I, I would just, on, on finishing up that echo, Mr. Wilkes comments that, um, and everyone else's, Ms. Wall, you have led on this issue. You have listened to, I think, grassroots focus groups, community members, students. Um, I, I, I know from being on this committee that Ms. Wall has been up a lot of nights and spent a lot of time on this, and 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 as well as Ms. Jackson and Ms. Zargapur, and I, I can't thank you both. I know this was tough. We have a lot of tough more things to do, and the next tough thing we're gonna do is rename our high school. So a motion is in order for 6.01 from Ms. Adele Jackson. Great, thank you, Chairman Latif. Um, I move that Prince William County School Board rename Stonewall Jackson High School, Unity Reed High School, and adopt the proposed formal resolution. Whereas the Prince William County School Board has listened to the voices of the citizens of Prince William County, and whereas the citizens of Prince William County have expressed their overwhelming support for the renaming of Stonewall Jackson High, and whereas we must learn from our history and remember the past, but in ways that support equality and respect for all people, and whereas the naming of schools is an important expression of community values, and whereas a school's name should bring diverse communities together and unite them under a common vision and ideal, and whereas a school's name should inspire, uplift, and motivate the school community to work toward a shared commitment to a personal and academic achievement, and whereas Arthur Reed, longtime security assistant at Stonewall Jackson High School, was beloved by students and staff, and whereas Arthur Reed saw the best in everyone and worked with the students to better themselves no matter what challenges they face. And whereas Arthur Reed was a favorite among Stonewall Jackson community for the renaming of the school. And whereas the school board seeks to recognize the voices and opinions of current and former students of the high school. And whereas the name Arthur Reed reflects a lifelong legacy and dedication to education in Prince William County, representing leadership, respect, pride, strength, and perseverance. Now, therefore, be it resolved on the 29th day of June 2020 that the Prince William County School Board renamed the Stonewall Jackson High School Unity Reed High School. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Do I have a second for that motion? I second the motion. 
Ms. Jennifer Wall seconds the motion. We will um, um, open the floor for discussion. Again, we'll do it in the same manner. We'll start with the committee members. Uh, Ms. Adele Jackson of the Brentsville District, please. Thank you. Um, I first want to thank the planning committee, uh, Mr. Beavers, Prince William County staff for their help during this process. I also want to thank hundreds of people who wrote emails and spoke. Thank you to those who also spoke with me via Zoom or the phone. I am so thankful for the huge level of community input. This process was difficult because of the numerous wonderful and deserving names, but it also reinforced that changing a name must be backed by actions. And I look forward to working with the board, Prince William County Schools and the county in the coming months. I'd also like to revisit ways to honor Lucinda Griffin and other heroes that we learned about. I listened to the entire county and it was the end, in the end, it was the voices of the staff, students and community members of this school that drove this decision. For this community, it is not just a name, it is a step in the direction that tells Stonewall Jackson High School that we are listening. The Stonewall community has historically felt unheard, yet unites together and celebrates their differences. It is their voices that govern this choice. It is their voices that said Stonewall has always been about unity that he was an angel of a man. If it wasn't for Mr. Reed, I wouldn't be here today. He taught me things I couldn't learn in the classroom. Most of us wanted adult's advice instead of our friend's advice, so it meant a lot to us because sometimes in our homes, we didn't have adults to ask. That he was a symbol of a good officer, that he saw Stonewall students for who they were, saw people as people, not just a color or a stereotype, that Stonewall students were more than that, that he loved the school and was a catalyst for change. For all these reasons, he was seen as the godfather who took pride in the school and embodied the name Unity. When speaking to his wife, she detailed the obstacles of racism he experienced and how he wanted to change things from within. As his daughter said, he spent his entire life trying to save his community. Isn't that all something we should strive for? Unity Reed is not only a symbol of unity, but a step in a direction of righting a wrong. I support the school in determining the colors and mascots amongst themselves, yet encourage staff to reach out to Mr. Wallingford, Mr. Mulgrew, and myself during this transition regarding financial matters. Thank you to the staff, students, Mrs. Reed, and Mr. Reed's daughter for teaching me about this wonderful man who was an optimistic activist who loved his school and his students. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Ms. Wall. Thank you. Um, I My same um, comments apply about uh, thanking everybody <laughs> um, for your hard work and um, including, you know, our division staff who helped on the planning committee, members of the committee, members of the school board, members of the community. Um, I, I think it's really great when we have a, an engaged community um, because it is democracy at work, um, people expressing their opinions. And tonight we heard a lot of wonderful opinions from about a lot of great ideas. There were just a lot of great ideas, great people, great members of history, people known and unknown. I just wanna echo my comments before um, that there are just so many great people that could be on the name of this school, but ultimately um, the students uh, who who had an outpouring of respect and love for this um, African-American individual who came practically at the end of his career after his retirement from his regular career and then spent every day greeting these students. I just think that's a beautiful example of what we're trying to accomplish in our schools. And the name Unity, again, um, the hope is that the students will be unified. And, and from what I hear, they are at Stonewall. Um, the, together, they help each other. They're underdogs together. Um, they reach their highest goals together. If they're gonna be a great school, they're gonna do it together. And I think it will remind them of that. I think the name will remind them. And then having read on the name of the school as well, a man who is the embodiment of Stonewall in how, as I've gathered from talking to students, he was an, he was an underdog, he was a little, a little known man outside of his small community, but he had a huge impact within his community. And that I think is kind of like Stonewall High School. So I think he's symbolic of the experience that a lot of kids have experienced. Um, they adored him, they loved him. Um, he was there talking to them. 
uh, with a smile on his face. When he passed, the community truly mourned. They were very, very sad for his loss. Um, I just think when somebody is quietly doing their, going about their business and not giving up on kids, that's just the perfect example for a school like this. And I really do hope that his memory will live on in the memories of the students, that he won't be forgotten. Um, you know, when this last group of couple of groups of students go through, that he'll still be remembered. And in that way, that's a really worthy honor. Um, and I, I just want to point out for everybody who came and talked to us for the three community input meetings and even your emails, you do your ancestors honor, you do your loved ones honor when you raise them to such a high level that you would believe them worthy of putting their name on a school. So uh, I just want to commend everybody for that. Um, it's very selfless and and it, it's very honorable. So thank you. Ms. Jargapur. Thank you, Dr. Latif. Um, again, thank you to Mr. Beavers and the planning staff for making sure we had the meetings organized. Um, my colleagues on the board um, working very hard to make sure that we heard the community. Again, um, it's the same thing from the, from the middle school feelings that I have. It, but my impression was after I met with the, some of the staff and students was that when they talked about the name unity, which it came up frequently, um, they are the embodiment of, of unity. And, um, and when then they talked about Mr. Reed, and I mean, I, I miss him and I didn't even know him. That's how, how much they loved him. And I, I have a feeling with, with Mr. Reed, his memory and his character are gonna live on in the, in the students of this school. And um, I, I think it's, it's just a, a really great, I know, we, I know there was some talk about not combining names, um, but it, both of those things are, so we're not gonna call it that anymore, are we? Both of those things are the school community. Um, I really believe, especially after all of the things that have gone on, we've had COVID, which was a, enough of an upheaval in our society. And then we had Black Lives Matter. And one of the biggest messages was that um, people went to the streets and the message is, I see you and I hear you. And I think us centering the work on the student voice and the community voice um, is exactly what we should have been doing in this case. So I am proud of the work that everybody's done. And again, I echo everything that Ms. Wall and um, Ms. Jackson have said, and this is probably the only place you'll hear Jackson and Wall in the same place, right? Um, ever again. Uh, but this is the time to, um, have a new beginning and I have the faith that these school communities are going to um, just do amazing things. So thank you for everyone for all of your hard work. And um, we as a board are, are very much committed to making sure that our students are getting what they need. Um, please don't think these name changes are just check a box and done, we're, we're, we're working, we're working. We'll get through this uh, COVID stuff first um, is, as, and uh, center our work on the needs of our our students, and um, and we'll we'll grow and and um, move on together. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Argapur. I'll, I'll wrap up the committee's sort of comments, and then um, we'll move on to the rest of the board. Um, this is too long overdue. Um, this change should have happened long ago or should never have happened at all, the naming in, in my opinion. This is a result of a grassroots effort of community members who over many years have been calling to do this. This isn't because of a call of any one of us. This is because of the hard work. Uh, many in our um, faith communities, our interfaith communities, the students who've long gone there, who've told us they didn't wanna hang up their um, diplomas. Um, there were a lot of things said over the calls and the meetings with folks about the importance of making this change. And this is um, something that I am very proud to be a part of. Um, I think the name speaks for itself. I think our members have spoken very highly uh, of these ideas for the name change. Mr. Reed, I would remind everyone, um, as the students pointed out to us, 
that he represented the best of what they would love to see in a, a security officer or a resource officer, a model of how folks in, in, in those professions should interact with students. And they have held him in such high regard that it was frankly overwhelming um, the support he received. And um, I think that is critical. I would echo the comments made earlier about the number of folks that we learned about during this um, hearings. Uh, Lucinda Griffin, Mary Bowser, Ms. Terrell, uh, there is incredible history here in Prince William County that we are not doing a good enough job teaching ourselves and teaching our students. So we have some work to do in that regard. There are numerous ways we must find to honor these individuals, recognize who is who has contributed to our community, and also learn from them. And I think we have a lot to lot of work to do in that regard. And I've said that at prior meetings. We have a long way to go there. Um, again, to address the idea of um, Stone, um, Stonewall, Unity, Reed, um, we are committed to the school, we're committed to student performance, and this board has and will continue to work on this. And as Ms. Zargapur, I think so, so eloquently said, said that this is not about checking a box. This is about getting the right thing done now and continuing the efforts of continuous improvement that the prior boards have done with Stonewall, so with Reed Unity and or um, and the further work we have to do and recognizing the tremendous challenges we have ahead. I will now go to Ms. Williams because I see you on the screen, Ms. Williams, if that's okay. <laughs> that's okay with me, thank you. Um, I, I too am gonna support this decision. I um, can't echo enough the same statements that this is long overdue. Um, it, it brings me back to uh, the renaming of Godwin Middle School. Um, and it's important when you're a person of color, especially, and you go to a school that is the majority makeup of people who look like you, that the rest of the building match. Um, it, it, it has a lifetime effect on who you are, what you think of yourself, um, the things that you pick up and, and, and read and, and learn. And, um, it's not to be taken lightly the name. And um, I say that because um, the the outpouring from the students, the staff, the, the community at Stonewall um, about Mr. Reed, I like that we um, as a board have decided to uh, add unity onto that and it matches the new name of the middle school um, I know a lot of those students will continue from that middle school into that building. Um, I like the celebration because uh, student body populations can change and fluctuate with this county. Um, it continues to be a um, county that is diversified and, and not only by representation by country, but um, by race, by ethnicity, are, I mean, just every way possible. And I think that, um, that, can, that, that high school is really unified in, in, in from their student body perspective. They speak as one, they represent each other very well. They're very quick to remind the rest of Prince William of their achievements. Um, I think it is high time that we honor the name change um, and the request. And it brings, again, closure to this school community. They can move on um, and be proud of the name that sits on the outside of the building. And to Mr. Reed, um, you know, one of the things that we do when we name schools after people is, is usually the person is famous or they've had um, uh, a significant historical contribution um, like Ms. Braxton and, and Ms. Griffin and, and some of the others. And, and um, I, when I think of Mr. Reed, he sort of fits in that unsung hero category because a lot of times students go to school and that is their second home. That is um, the place where they get guidance and they get um, comfort and love that maybe they don't receive at home or maybe that's just a place where um, their their immediate role models are. And I think that that is what Mr. Reed embodied for a lot of the student population um, and probably some of the faculty as well from the way that they spoke of him. And I, you know, 
know, I, I can think back and remember over my educational career, it's not always my teacher, um, all, although we all have that teacher that has um, had an impact in our lives, not to not to um, take away from teachers or make their, their impact lightly. Um, but I think there are other people that often um, we don't speak about enough, such as coaches or um, security officers or um, people who, who fit other uh, job titles and categories that have just as much as an, of an impact on our students and um, really inspire them. So um, I'm really proud of the work that we're doing. I stand committed with my other board members and, and making sure that we make the public um, very clear in our understanding that this is not a box that we are checking. And uh, we are a board that is six months uh, going strong. So we um, have started with all of the best intentions in the world and got interrupted a little bit by a pandemic. But we are um, still just as continue, just as committed as we have had from day one on um, getting the work done that we all feel needs to be done um, for the betterment of our students and for the staff and the community. We're the second largest employer, and what we do matters. Um, how we treat our staff matters um, because we are all connected. So I am really, really proud of this board and all of the work um, that has gone into making this happen, especially the naming committee. The amount of collaboration that I've seen um, is just, I mean, for me, it's like a dream come true with my um, conflict resolution background. And really, I think one of the things that this pandemic has allowed us to do is, is hear more from our community. And I am so overjoyed by that. Um, previous years I've been on the board screaming about not having a bus stop and not having people be able to come and have to take off work and not have a car or transportation. And um, I think that having these virtual meetings um, has really leveled the playing field and allowed us to hear more from the people we affect directly um, and I'm just very proud that we listened. So um, thank you. I'm going to stop talking now, but thank you. I'm so excited. Thank you, Vice Chair Williams. Um, you know, if folks wonder why my eyes are always darting back and forth, I'm trying to figure out our tech and keep the screens moving and seeing sort of chats on the side and, um, and making sure we're getting this right. So I'm going to go to Mr. Wilk next. If Ms. Jesse and Ms. Ralston could share their cameras, if they so choose, they would be uh, called upon after Mr. Wilk. Mr. Wilk. I'll be brief. Ms. Williams took my time. I'm just kidding, <laughs> but I'll be brief. Um, uh, I, I support everything everyone has said. Um, I think this is a great change uh, for the community, long overdue. Uh, I want to thank uh, Ms. Jackson for her leadership on this, uh, Ms. Zagapur and Ms. Wall. Um, and everyone, uh, and I will support the name that they have all decided to go with and all the other comments that have been said. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wilk. Uh, Ms. Jesse? Uh, hi. Um, I, first of all, you know, there are people who will make historical or historically significant. And I think Mr. Reed, uh, he touched the heartstrings of students and sometimes is not the person who has uh, maybe has historical significance that, and so I've always been a supporter of the Reed name. I think though that there is uh, a bigger community that we missed, and I'd like for the board to consider those people. Uh, another person that's been waiting, and I, you know, I've watched these board meetings and I've looked at the faces and. Um, you know, I'm African-American and I looked at your faces and you were stunned at the number of people, the slaves and various people. And you, you had this look like, I didn't know that. I had no idea these people had made this contribution. On the other side of the screen and in African-American homes, we were saying the same thing. We had no idea. I never heard of Lucinda Griffin. And apparently that family has been waiting and wanting something named for her for many, many years. And the other name that uh, we look at our youth and I have in my hand, Dr. King's uh, message for the millennium. Inside this book is the name of Kende, Dr. Kende from Stonewall Jackson. You have two people from Stonewall Jackson that are part of the Delta Sigma Theta Oratorical. And 
Ibram uh, in his opening statement, introduction of the book. He talks about us. He talks about Prince William County, how in 2010, we changed his life, that he became the author. He's a five-time uh, bestseller. I would like to see, I had recommended for consideration that his name be placed in a library. It seems fitting. He's an author. And I think his books on anti-racism, that is the national focus. I think that we need to look at the school community, but I'd like for the board to consider the national community. He had 30,000 signatures. The Griffins, I don't know them at all. Never heard of this lady. But here's this 14-year-old slave from Prince William County. And just like we did for Stonewall Jackson Middle, I would like for the board to consider naming the library after Mr. Mr. Dr. Kendrick, and also perhaps an auditorium or some where the, the children in that, the students in that building not only know Mr. Reeve, who's one aspect of the African American community, but there are other aspects of our community. They're the kids who make it against the odds. Dr. Kendi went to Stonewall Jackson High School and is now featured on CBS, ABC. And I think we do an injustice as a school division where we don't recognize that we're, we're one of the reasons he is who he is. Along with Norman Jones. I know Dr. Waltz has heard Norman Jones. He came out of Stonewall too. And we are the reason. Delta Sigma Theta, of course, you know, I'm going to say something about Delta Sigma Theta and the oratorical and what I've been doing with that program. But I always wanted to find kids that nobody recognized, that there were all these African American kids who were waiting to, waiting to be found. So here's a man who has been found. So I don't know if I make an amendment or if you could consider it down the road, but I would like to, to recommend that we name the library in honor of Dr. Kendrick and that we invite him to Prince William County to help us with our anti-racism, uh, the big picture of anti-racism. I again commend Mr. Reed. I felt his name should be up front somewhere in, for, in bold letters. But I, Dr. Kennedy, and to be honest, uh, Ms. Griffin, I never knew her. I felt her name should have been out there somewhere for people to see, and maybe we could find another way of recognizing her. So I don't know if Ms. Jackson was willing to consider um, Ms. Ms. Dr. Kennedy's name being in the library. Yes, go ahead. She raised her hand. Um, thank you, Ms. Jesse. Um, Dr. Latif, may I address Ms. Jesse? Sure. Um, yes, Ms. Jesse, that is something that um, the committee was considering, um, uh, naming the library, um, but I felt like it was a bigger discussion um, for, you know, when everybody has a chance to talk. So if you don't mind, could we revisit that? Because sure. um, it, it was like so much going on and uh, we had <laughs> talked about naming the library. <laughs> I know how difficult it's been. I, I, when I saw those names, I thought, I'm glad I'm not on the committee. But <laughs> time in history for us. Yeah, yes. I, we need I don't to want to take a lot of time, but I want to show you this little picture here. This is a picture of me and my family. And guess, and it's on my, in my living room. And we applauded because my sister, the, the, my, my sister, my past who passed away was there with the girls, Jessica and Jennifer, you see they're very tiny. We were at Stone Mountain. We were applauding this monument. We, as African Americans, we don't know. We had no idea that Stonewall Jackson was on that mountain. It's the biggest mount, it's supposed to be the biggest monument ever. Stonewall Jackson. So we're all learning as African Americans, as Caucasians, as people from different cultures, we're learning. So I just want to share with you from my lens as an African American that there's a bigger community. And 
the Stonewall Jackson. I love what those kids did because I'm a kid person and Lori knows that, but I would like for you to revisit. I don't know what we can do for, um, and someone said, don't say this, but I will say that maybe something we need to name a park or something for uh, Mrs. Uh, Lucinda Griffin. I don't think that this opportunity, this family who came to us tonight and came to us in Newark, I don't think they should be, be forgotten. I don't want to be difficult, guys, but this is a moment in history where we can make a big difference. And you've got these two historic people who bring different things to the table. So thank you very much. So we'll reconsider, we'll look at it down the road. I want it to have it done, thank you. Ms. Ralston. Go ahead and unmute. Okay, sorry. I just wanna thank you all for your great works. Congratulations to the families whose members are being honored. Thank you. That's it. Okay, um, Dr. Waltz. Thank you so much, Chairman Latif. And again, congratulations to our school board, Unity Reed High School, beautiful. Uh, this is very, very special to me for a variety of reasons. Um, I really started getting more and more involved uh, over at the high school a couple of years ago. And um, you'll see over my shoulder the, uh, the goat that was presented to me at a school board meeting a year ago. That's a Stonewall jersey on that. Um, when that gets updated, I'll, I'll pay for that one myself. But the students and staff presented that one night at a school board meeting, and um, I, I, it's just so many great things that go on over there. And it, just like Mr. Miller's a great principal at the middle school, Dr. Nichols is an amazing principal. Um, we asked him if he wanted to consider possibly the new high school. He had no intention of leaving the high school he's currently leading, and he embraced the name change. Uh, that was one of the things Chairman Latif asked me early on, you know, where do you think Dr. Nichols will be? And he was on board uh, immediately. So I have every confidence that he will work with the students, parents, and community on uh, the movement that we have to make everything at Unity Reed High School uh, uplifting and uh, bring it in line with all of our other high schools. Um, I have visited Stonewall Middle and Stonewall Jackson High School a total of approximately 40 times uh, over the tenure that I've been here. And I can just say again, their International Baccalaureate Program has data that puts them in a very competitive position with many International Baccalaureate schools across the world. Uh, so th this is not something new, that reputation is amazing. And I remember when I first arrived in the summer of 2005, I received pictures and um, a recording of the orchestra that had just toured Europe. And their reputation in the arts over there has been uh, amazing as well. But a great staff over there, fantastic kids. And I just look forward to making this transition. And again, I applaud the board on your work. Thank you, especially to the naming committee for all those extra hours and everyone else who participated and our staff as well. Thank you and congratulations to our school board. Ms. Jackson, I uh, defer to you. You have any further comments? If not, we'll call the vote or when after your comments. I just grateful for the collaboration with the community, with the school staff, with our board and I look forward to the continued discussion and how to recognize the heroes we learned about and um, thank you. Okay I will go ahead and call the vote we will do this uh, from the committee members first and then um, probably alphabetical order. Um, first I'd like to um, uh, we are voting on the motion to rename SJHS to Reed Unity High School. Ms. I'm sorry, Unity Reed High School. Sorry, sorry. Unity Reed High School, let me get that right. SJHS will now be called Unity 
Reed High School. Um, I would like to first ask Ms. Adele Jackson, the Brentsville District, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Jackson votes yes. Ms. Uh, Jennifer Wall of the Gainesville District, how do you vote? I vote yes. Ms. Wall votes yes. Ms. Lisa Zargapur of the Coles District, how do you vote? I vote yes. Ms. Zargapur votes yes. I, being a member of the committee, um, vote yes to support this motion. Latif votes yes. Next, we will go to Ms. Lily Jesse of the Occoquan District. Yes. Ms. Lily Jesse votes yes. Ms. Diane Ralston of the Neabsco District. Yes. Ms. Ralston votes yes. Mr. Wilk of the Potomac District. Yes. Mr. Wilk votes yes. Ms. Lori Williams, Vice Chair of the Woodbridge District. I vote yes. Ms. Williams votes yes. That brings the vote to a unanimous vote to rename Stonewall Jackson High School to Unity Reed High School. I want to thank the board and congratulate them. We have on the panel uh, our student, Ben Kim, who also is a rising senior at Stonewall Jackson High School, our student member of this board. And I'd like to um, ask Ben to, uh, I know he spoke during citizens comment time, but make a couple comments as to um, um, your thoughts on this evening. Mr. Kim, are you there? I don't, uh, is he on the panel still? Yes, he's on the panel. Mr. Kim, your mic is live. All right, awesome. I couldn't uh, unmute it, but thank you. Um, I just want to say uh, to the board, I'm, I, I'm, I'm like truly thankful to y'all for like listening to the Snowball community. You guys make some like really great points tonight. Might I mention that the members of the naming committee are in their first terms on the school board. They've had a, a lot of new things to deal with. The board has handled this very well on such short notice and kind of, yeah, we also have a pandemic and reopening to deal with. Um, to Prince William County students, look how far we've come. Uh, I'm willing to bet many of you listening like didn't know who your school board representative was prior to this and you know how you could speak to the board. And as many as you know, I've been trying to like convince everyone and more students to connect with the board and now um, it's starting to happen. So this is what unity looks like, it truly is. Three years ago, we had no student voices on the board. And now, thanks to the support of Ms. Williams and many others, we have one. And now, to the greater community, thank you for educating me about these local heroes. I would like to invite you all, RSVP is appreciated, into our family and become one of us. I'm inviting the families of the local heroes to come share at our future Black History Month assemblies. I'm inviting all adults to come and involve, be involved in our school. Supervisor Angry and I have briefly discussed a mentorship program for Prince William County students to interact with and get life guidance from wise people. Let me know if you're interested because it seems like there's a lot of interested people out there. I'm glad that there are so many invested members in our community, truly. And I'm inviting all of, all of you listening just to not stop at this name though. Do more. The board is gonna take that extra step. Will you? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kim. Um, next on our agenda will be one last um, recommendation motion from Ms. Lori Williams, which I don't know the number on that, Ms. Williams, but go ahead. That's uh, regarding the retreat. Uh, yeah, so it's actually item 604. Um, I had, um, I'll go ahead and make the motion, the motion and um, because it's well, it's action information. I guess we all talk about it first and then um, make the motion. We'll do. First. Yes, you're right. Thank you. Um, so I move that the Prince William County School Board, at a date to be determined um, this summer, uh, meet to have a retreat to discuss board governance um, and, uh, well, just board governance. Do I have a second? Miss Lisa Zargapur seconds while I lip sync that, or I read lips. Can you unmute so I can hear you second to Ms. Zargapur? Yeah, I, I second. Ms. Zargapur seconds. Um, we'll open the floor for discussion, Ms. Williams. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, as I mentioned a few moments ago, this board is uh, in its infancy, it's six months old. Um, normally, I don't want to say normally, but so far as I've been a sitting board member, we've had the opportunity as newly sat boards to um, be able to meet and sort of discuss governance and um, board norms and um, really get an understanding to of, of our um, a deeper understanding of our positions and how we work and facilitate with staff and with the with the board of county supervisors and all sorts of uh, things under that nature. Um, the oh. idea was floated around uh, at the beginning of our term, but um, as this pandemic has interrupted so many other things, it also interrupted that. And I think that it's important. Um, for this board to be able to um, sit down, develop our own norms. Um, and it's not just my idea. I have to give credit to every single um, fellow board member uh, that is on this board right now. In one way, shape, or form, we all have our priority that fall under board governance that we would like to have discussed. And each one is just as important as the, as the other. So I can't take um, full credit for this. Um, this is definitely a very unique board and the fact that we are all committed to working together, to collaborating, um, to supporting the school division and the community. And I think uh, it would be imperative, it would be a missed opportunity if we didn't take a, a moment to sit down and um, evaluate ourselves as a board and develop our own norms and um, really get a deeper understanding of board governance. That is that is one of the jobs of every uh every board, um, whether it's corporate, school, county, um, it's just a, a basic, something basic that should be done. And so um, that's why I bring this this um, action up for, this item up for action tonight so that we can make it official because it would be a public meeting. And I think it's also important for the public to know that this is something that we have been discussing for months and really have not had the opportunity to um, set in action. Uh, we talk about being committed and we talk about the things that we want to do. And I think this is another step um, for the public to be able to see us and fulfilling our commitment to the school division. So I'm going to stop talking now. Thank you. <laughs> any any further comment? Ms. Wall? Um, I think this is a great idea. Um, I, am, I appreciate Ms. Williams bringing it up. Um, as a new member of the board, I, I welcome the opportunity to for further training. I think we everybody can always learn. I, it doesn't matter how old you are, how good you think you are at your job. I, and I don't think I'm, you know, I, I admit I'm new at my job. So I think I think it would be great. And it would be important for us as a board to establish some norms um, and learn, learn together. Um, I think I think if we do that, we can really um, we can be even more effective. So I, I, I support this idea. Great. I'll, I'll go around so it'll be easier. Uh, I see Ms. Zargapur's hand. Go ahead, Lisa. Uh, thank you, Dr. Latif. Yeah, I think this is a great idea. I know that when um, Ms. Wall and Ms. Jackson and I were at the uh, new board orientation in Richmond, we had we were all like, things, we're going to learn all the things. And, um, and then COVID hit, and it just seems like that's not an excuse. So we wanna to get to work. Um, I think it's important that we make sure we have our, our vision and our mission ready to go so that uh, we can just you know get through everything. We work well together as it is and I'm just looking forward to learning more with you guys. Um, I'll go to um, Ms. Jackson. Um, I also think this is a great idea. It touches on my teacher heart because um, it centers around, you know, PLC, professional learning committee. So I think any opportunity to grow and learn to collaborate is a great opportunity. So thank you. Excellent. Uh, Mr. Wilk. I vote yes. <laughs> Ms. Ralston. Oh, yes. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, and, uh, well, we will do the official vote, but I guess that means you're supporting the effort. We'll do the vote. I'll do another roll call. Ms. Jesse? Um, when I came on this board, um, everything I learned, I learned from Betty Covington. So when Betty Covington left, she left with everything in her head. I think that uh, Ms. Williams and I uh, and Ms. Covington got together once because I think coming on as a new person, you're dependent on 
is what's inside the head of the previous board member. And if you're not close to them, then you don't learn. And so I have been an advocate for us developing some type of governance manual from the beginning. And Ms. William will tell you that. Uh, I think the number one thing that we need, not just governance, but we need to think about our mission as a board. And our mission should be student learning high levels. And I know Dr. Latif talks about that a great deal. But, and I know I bore everybody talking about SMART goals, but this board needs to know what is it that we will accept as learning? What does world-class really look like? And what will we consider to be world-class? Uh, at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. And so with that in mind, um, I support this initiative. Thank you. Okay, and then I think, uh, did I give everyone a chance to speak? Yeah. Uh, Mr. Wilk said yes. Okay, I, and, and I, I obviously support this effort. And um, and uh, if there's no further discussion, Ms. Williams? So uh, Lily brings up, a, uh, Ms. Jesse brings up a good point. Um, this is a direct result of good mentorship, um, transformation of knowledge down, and uh, continuing to grow as a board. And uh, she is she is the direct inspiration for this. She was my mentor when I came on the board. Uh, Mr. Kim brought up about mentorship. Um, he uh, gave me praise for student leadership on the board. I was not the only one uh, member of the board who was supportive of that. That was also Miss Jesse as well. So um, I think it's it's a matter of continuing best practices. So I, I know that we're all a fan of that term. I just couldn't help myself, but um, I, I would like to also give some credit back to Ms. Jesse because I said we're all supportive of it, but that's how we grow. We have good mentors and we take it to the next level. So thank you. Okay. Okay, I'll take a vote. We'll go in alphabetical order. Ms. Jackson, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Jackson votes yes. Ms. Jesse? Yes. Jesse votes yes. Latif, I vote yes. Ralston, how do you vote? Yes. Ms. Ralston votes yes. Mr. Wilk? Yes. Mr. Wilk votes yes. Ms. Wall? Yes. Ms. Wall votes yes. Ms. Um, Zargapur? Yes. And Ms. Zargapur votes yes. Ms. Williams? Emphatically yes. Yes. Okay. I will, um, at this point, just a matter of housekeeping. The school board has added um, July 8th as a work session regarding the reopening of the schools that will be done uh, via electronic means as well. Uh, July 15th, and I'm not sure where we are on that. We're still putting these together, but July 15th will be a meeting to finalize the approval of the reopening, hopefully. And um, there will be, um, I would ask every parent and everybody out there to continue to go to our website to look at um, what um, recommendations we're making. Um, you know, certainly email school board members, email staff, um, email the superintendent's office on ideas and thoughts for the reopening. We are um, just to, it, it's speaking on behalf of the whole board here, we are getting a lot of emails. Um, I, 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 it's in the hundreds on the reopening and the concerns and the anxieties shared by our families, parents, and students. And I can tell you that the entire board and Superintendent Waltz shares your same anxieties, concerns, and desires to get this right. Uh, we are reading every email. Please keep sending them. We are sharing them with the staff. We are considering everything everyone's talking about. We're looking at what folks are doing around the world, around our country, and listening to um, experts. And so as we put this opening together, please continue to stay engaged and continue to communicate. If board members don't get back to your emails, um, um, from my standpoint, please forgive me. Uh, we are working through them and we will get through them um, as we um, continue to um, do this. But rest assured that every single board member I know is reading all of the emails and hearing from all of you. With that in mind, um, I want to uh, wrap up our last meeting really this June and, and say thank you all. Thank you again to the naming committees, all of the hard work that went into this. You know, um, this process was thoroughly uh, engaged with our community to get to where we are tonight. 
congratulations to the whole board. Congratulations to Prince William County Schools. And um, uh, if there's no objection, I think the, mo the meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.